Um, the information about the meeting is contained on the agenda, um, as well as all the instructions on how to participate. Um, also understand um, we're recording this by audio and video. Um, applicants will be able to uh, assume remote control if necessary. Um, and um, also on April 6th, uh, we, um, the commission delegated signature authority to uh, Andrea for all decisions issued during the uh, um, duration of emergency. Andrea Langhauser, our environmental planner, uh, assistant planning director. So now that all the housekeeping is uh, in order, um, just want to call uh, first one up is 156 Turnpike Street. I promoted uh, Peter Collins, engineering. Good evening, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, would you like, okay, you're gonna share the plans or would you prefer me to do it? I noticed you had a plan view. What's uh, that? Whatever you want, Peter, I I'll let you do whatever you want. So I have the plans if you need them. Okay, um, yeah, it might be easier if you let me do it just so I can pan around to, you know, look at where I'm talking about. <clears throat> go for it. Um, there we go, let's see here. Should be coming up. Uh, looks like it's frozen up on me. Yeah. All right, can you see that now? Yes. Okay. Colors. Colors. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'll, I'll begin when everyone's ready. Uh, for the record, Peter Lyons with Collins Engineering Group, representing the homeowner at 156 Turnpike Street in Easton. This is a septic repair for an existing three bedroom home. Uh, I'll start with a close up of the project. What we're doing is replacing the existing cesspool in the rear of the property with a 1500 gallon tank and then going to a gravity fed 14 foot by 25 foot leaching bed of plastic chambers. Um, in the rear of the site, we have a bordering vegetated wetland that pretty much parallels the property line in the rear. The proposed system is uh, as close as 120 feet to the BVW. The proposed erosion control is 107 feet. Um, so we're outside of the wetland, the BVW jurisdiction. However, we have the end of a um, drainage ditch opposite the street. Shown on our plan are the 100 foot and 200 foot buffers that just cuts through the end of our leaching system. So um, the project is outside of BBW jurisdiction. However, it is within the riverfront, the outer riparian uh, resource area. Um, to protect the resources, we proposed erosion control around the projects. <clears throat> Uh, we've also provided dewatering pit details and location shown on the plan. Um, the soil stockpile area is to occur more or less between the tank and the leaching field. Uh, we have our standard notes. Um, I don't think I have to read through them all. Keeping the site clean, sweeping up, DEP sign shown on site. Uh, silt sack. DEP sign here. What's that? No DEP. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking ahead of what I'm reading. Mm -hmm. But no DEP, but silt sacks in the catch basins. Our log disturbances are listed as 5,600 square feet. Um, just under 5,000 square feet of which is in the outer 200 foot um, riverfront. So this is a, a pretty straightforward project. Uh, 
um, I guess if there's any, uh, the, uh, lastly, we're proposing three conservation posts um, along the 50 foot buffer. One's in the wooded area, the other two are in a, a lightly wooded kind of, as you transition from the lawn into the back of the property. <laughs> Uh, that's the overview. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to address them. So just as a, a note to, you know, um, those on the um, call as well as other commission members, the um, <clears throat> that uh, outflow from the uh, drainage ditch actually goes into a, uh, a stormwater system underneath the uh, underneath Turnpike Street. So it doesn't actually discharge into the property. So. Correct. <laughs> So, um, does anyone on, on the commission have any questions? Okay. Um, any uh, anyone in the public have any public comment for one fifty six Turnpike Street? Just uh, raise your hand or put something in the Q and A or chat. So seeing none, would uh, what would you like to do, Peter? I'd like to, to close the hearing, please. Can I just make a note? I, I think um, if, just for the record, this is strictly a local bylaw question. There uh, will only be issuing the, uh, if you choose to approve it, it'll be issued only under the local bylaw. Um, and I just wanted to point out that um, this is one of the problems or one of the obstacles of the local regulations is that we have jurisdiction for uh, out to 200 feet, even though our performance standard for this type of ditch is significantly lower than that. Just don't have the ability to do de minimis review. So this is uh, this is an RDA, so I will make a motion to issue a negative. Uh, RDA with the um, based upon the uh, the plans um, with the condition that uh, they put in three uh, permanent markers. Thomas, second. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Callfell's aye. One D aye. Spady aye. Thomas aye. There you go, Peter. Right. <laughs> Looks like we have someone else, and then I got three more up after that. So I'll stay tuned. Okay. Thanks, Peter. We'll probably be about ten or fifteen minutes. Okay. Michael Android, and I'm going to uh, promote him to panelist. Michael, uh, can you stop sharing your screen, Peter? Hi, Mike. Evening. How are you? So uh, this is a notice of intent for a septic system replacement um, at um, in, at the Easton Housing Authority at 390 Foundry Street. Um, I think it's got another colloquial name, right? I mean, it's uh, called something else, some little road. So, so why don't you, uh, do you want me to bring up the plan? Um, I prefer to do a screen share if we can. I have everything set up here. That's easier on me. All right. Can everyone see that? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So this is, um, as the chair mentioned, this is also called Chandler Way. This is a uh, seven unit residential facility that's managed by the Eastern Housing Authority. There are five buildings two units in each of these three and one in the last unit here. <clears throat> and it's serviced by a driveway, uh, main driveway with some side driveways and walkways and um, uh, public water and a private sewer and septic system, which is the um, crux of the project. And as you can see uh, on the site, which is about two acres, it's kind of rectangular shape here. There's a, a wetland uh, system on the property here another one on the back of the property. 
um, in one across County Street in an office sheet. We can just see a little piece of it here, uh, a larger wetland here. The red lines are the 50 foot <clears throat> offset from the, those DVWs. Um, the magenta line is 100 foot offset. So you can see there's very little area on the site that is outside of that 100 foot buffer. And this green line, uh, I apologize on the color, I should be a darker, it's hard to see, uh, is the 100 year floodplain. Everything on this side, uh, on the east or south side, if you will, is floodplain. Most of the site is out of it, but it does kind of move up and make into buildings and uh, up into this area here. So that is the existing site. <clears throat> um, what we're proposing to do, this project has two components. It's um, one primarily to replace the failing septic system and I'm gonna put back for a sec. The existing system uh, consists of as a collection system from each uh, service pipe from each building uh, that collects down to a series of tanks, septic tank, there's a pump chamber that pumps to a leaching field, which is in this corner of the site here, which is just grass field. That system has been failing here. Uh, for a little while now, um, reaching out uh, of the slope into this swale along the front. Um, and no issues of backup, but operational issues um, that we're seeking to direct. So for this project will replace that septic system entirely, including the tanks, um, and uh, install three um, drip dispersal leaching areas. And if you're not familiar with it, what drip dispersal is, it's a um, Mass DEP approved innovative alternative uh, system for septics. It uses, um, and I'll bring up some photos here if you're interested. Um, it uses small diameter piping that's laid in uh, rows and with the same bed and the same cover. <clears throat> and this is half inch tubing. And they have emitters about every two or three feet that disperse wastewater into the soil below. Um, and the reason we use that here is um, uh, the site is uh, very restricted as, as you can see, both by um, employment constraints and what's already developed. And um, to try and spread that wastewater load throughout the site the best we can, uh, drip dispersal lends itself to unique shapes. Um, and um, you can see there's three areas here, all different, all differently shaped. Uh, to spread that wastewater load out to three different areas. And it does that um, many times a day in smaller doses, as opposed to a typical pressure distribution system, which sends a big slug of water every time the pumps turn on. Um, so we feel that's a benefit for this project too. And these systems are allow um, um, the whole uh, septic system to be much higher in the soil profile. Um, it's about a foot and a half shallower than the typical stone and pipe septic system. So we're able to um, maintain a higher offset to groundwater. Uh, we feel like that's one of the issues that might be going on here on the ground on the table at times. So it's leading to issues. So um, that is one part of the project, the septic system. <clears throat> the second part of the project is uh, repaving of all the, uh, the two minute surfaces on the site. So that's the main driveway, all the side driveways, um, walkways. Uh, and we're doing that by a pulled up reclamation where we can, which is just grinding that existing asphalt material into the subgrade below, creating new haven walkways and some of these driveways need to be excavated out and the foot gravel replaced manually because we can't fit the equipment in now. Um, replacing curbing, wherever there is some. Um, not changing grading um, beyond correcting a few low spots, um, maintaining existing drains pat patterns. There's one catch basin on the site right here, that discharges to this D series wetland, um, which in then turn pipes out to the larger wetland to the south. Uh, we aren't touching any of that. Um, that is the work. Um, it's, um, um, oh, part, uh, I meant to touch on the septic system work. We're doing a little bit of fill in the floodplain right here that's necessary for um, to maintain cover over this uh, drip dispersal area is only two. So this hatched area you can see here is a little bit of floodplain fill. And we do compensatory storage at a ratio of one and a half to one down in this area. Uh, basically just cutting out what's already a slope. Um, so that is uh, a synopsis of the project. Um, I'll certainly can touch on anything in more detail or ask any questions if any of the members wish.
Could you please show the erosion control line? Yep, I'm um, gonna switch to this plan. So we're um, encompassing the entire work area with the road, straw wall, and the silt fence. So um, there's a line that connects the back of this building all the way around the front, all the work that's in here. Um, another line along the street and the property line here for all the work in this area, protecting the D series wetland with the row all the way around, all the work in the roadway. <clears throat> and then again, down here, um, so the C series wetland in the back, uh, row here to protect uh, anything from running in that direction. Uh, stockpile area, staging storage and stockpile area is shown right here um, in the upland area. Um, that we expect, uh, we don't expect a whole lot of stockpiling here, um, especially with the pavement plotting that'll be loaded onto a truck and um, uh, brought straight out if it's moved from the road. There might be some sand material for the septic system, but not a whole lot. Um, but this will be with contract to store that, and that'll be bringing with uh, silt pens that should be noted on the plan sheet here. Um, so I think that covers that. So I think that um, maybe just one other thing to note here is um, because we are um, this, th there's some additional um, pavement going in at the, the one unit, um, which is in, uh, in, in the inside the hundred foot buffer zone for um, that wetland in, in an ACEC, we have to have a waiver request. So um, I know you, you did submit that waiver request and uh, I hope the commission has had an opportunity to review that. Um, it, um, it's sort of self-explanatory. The, um, the driveway for that unit, which is a handicap accessible unit is not in compliance. Um, and that's why they're needing to um, increase the size of that driveway to bring it into compliance with ADA standards. Um, and so um, I think that um, Given this is a uh, Easton Housing Authority and uh, uh, bringing into compliance is probably significant public interest um, here in this specific case. So, um, from my own standpoint, I think the waiver uh, meets the requirements. I, I don't think there's another alternative here of where to put that handicap uh, parking space. So, I think he's uh, the applicant has met the uh, criteria from my own personal experience or my, my own personal opinion. So, um, I, I don't have uh, any. Um, any, any other questions about it? I, I think this particular system has actually been used on another site in town or, um, um, so already. So we have some experience with um, it being used in town as well as um, its success. Um, and so um, it'll be nice to get this the driveway repaired. There are There is one gigantic pothole right there in the middle of it for sure. Um, and there's a couple other smaller ones that I'm sure that the uh, the tenants will be uh, quite happy to have that happen. So, um, anybody have any questions for uh, the applicant? <coughs> Mike, this is Commissioner Lundeen. How are you tonight? Good. Good. So, I was wondering in that one handicap cap spot that needs uh, paving in the ACEC, um, have you considered putting in permeable pavers there, or is that just way beyond reasonable in your? Um, well, I've had mixed experience with permeable pavers and, and pervious uh, asphalt um, and tends on a site like this where the maintenance might not be what you'd like it to be. Um, it ends up uh, uh, not working as well as you intend. Um, and, you know, in particular here, you know, the aisle has to be paved per ADA requirements. The parking space has to be a hard surface set for ADA requirements, so we felt Petunus asphalt is the best way to go for this. And it's only an increase, I think, of 135 square feet, which is basically just the, the dimension of the aisle here. That's one parking space, really, the increase we're talking about overall growth of the site. Um, so it was considered, we always look at all alternative uh, um, surfacing we can. Um, it's not a good fit here, too. And the soils are not great on this site either, especially in this area. They are where the septic systems are, that's why they're there. Back here, um, it's a bit wetter, um, a bit soil poor, so I don't think it would infiltrate for a lot of time. Right, thank you, Mike. Um, Any other questions from the commission before I go to public comment? OK, 
Okay, so any public comment on 390 Foundry Street? You can raise your hand or put a, a question in the chat box, Q&A. Okay, um, seeing none, um, Mike, I assume you want to close the hearing? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, I'll make a motion to, uh, this is a notice of intent. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to um, close the hearing and issue a permit for work and order conditions um, as noted in the staff report. Beatty, uh, a Roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundin, aye. Speedy, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, so we are back to uh, Peter Lyons with Collins Engineering at uh, 83 Short Street. All right, you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, give me one second. We're going to share my screen again. All right, we got it here. Yep. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, this is 83 Short Street. This is another, uh, it's a notice of intent for a residential septic repair, existing three bedroom home. Uh, looking at the site, we have a, um, what do we call it? There's a stream in the back of the property with the mean high water shown um, and an associative BVW line, which starts on the western portion of the property and wraps around the house, uh, paralleling the stream in the rear. Our proposal is to replace the existing tank in the back of the house and abandon the existing leaching area and provide a new um, Curtec leaching system, which is uh, similar to concrete flow diffusers, but kind of a modern variation on that. Um, that's an H20 rated setup that's to be installed partially under an existing um, reprocessed driveway. Um, oops, sorry to move around on you. We've proposed erosion control around the project, starting at the back of the house, wrapping around the leaching and ending back at the access point of the driveway. We have proposed our conservation post as shown on the plan around the project. There's a total of six of those. Um, we show uh, dewatering pit details, um, a stockpile area out in the corner of the yard outside of the 100 foot uh, riverfront area, as well as the BVW buffer. The area, the works being performed is currently existing lawn at the tanks in a combination of lawn and processed asphalt where the leaching field is going to go. Uh, that's all to be returned to original loam and seeded condition. There will be minor grading associated with the tank installation and uh, the grading on the leaching end, pretty much flat over the system, but tapering off to match the existing grade down towards the property line. Uh, this is a wooded area. We don't anticipate any runoff issues, you know, towards the abutter. Overall, uh, pretty straightforward forward septic for projects. Um, at this point, I'll entertain any questions. Uh, what's the, uh, the the closest distance to the uh, the wetlands is the uh, the system is? Uh, the proposed leaching system is fifty nine feet off a of wetland flag five. The tank is as close as thirty one feet. Um, and, and that's the that's the current location of the, the tank that's there. 
Um, yeah, if you look close, you can see the dashed out tank. So yeah. what we're trying to do is keep it as far away from the wetlands as possible. And also by tucking it closer to the house, it'll help us uh, with the grading. You know, if we put it any further back, we'd be chasing the grading out. Uh, Title V requirement is only 10 feet from the foundation, but we are contending with an existing deck. So the 15 feet is as close as we want to go without compromising, you know, any further the deck footings. <clears throat> um, yeah, 17 feet to your closest erosion control. And again, the, the stockpile area is outside the 100 foot buffer. That's proposed in the front corner here. Great. Um, Go ahead, Peter. That's about all I got. If the commission has any questions. So uh, I don't have any further questions. Any commissioners have a question? I'm good. Nothing to add. Okay, so uh, nothing from the, the commission. So any public comment on 83 Short Street? Raise your hand and put a question in the Q&A box. Um, so uh, I will, um, I assume you want to close, Peter. So yeah. I will uh, make a motion to uh, close and issue a permit for work and order conditions. Um, no dumping in the wetlands uh, will be a perpetual condition. This this property uh, abuts right up against the wetlands and it's used by the family. So. Um, I just want to make sure that that's noted in the conditions. Hold on. I have a question. This is Carol. Oh. Um, we so, have a lot of... so, okay, so, okay. Sorry. So, do, do you want to ask for a second first? Well, um, I'm just trying to, I, I don't want to be too rigid here, but so, so go ahead. I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. How's it? Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, the backyard is lawn. And so that lawn is really close to a wetland. So I wonder um, about restricting the use of lawn fertilizers that close to a resource area. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm all in favor in general of, of, you know, general lawn maintenance, you know, guidelines, you know, uh, environmentally friendly. So um, my, my concern is with these septic repair um, situations is I, I hate to, to sort of put too many conditions on them for a system that is obviously improving the overall um, health of the the, uh, the wetland environment. So um, that's just that's just my personal thing. I, I I'm not sure I want to be doing it on if they were doing an addition or something like that. I, I might have a different uh, opinion, but I mean my own thing is I, I just anybody else. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards just focusing on the septic system versus any sort of additional kind of conditions. I mean, anything related to the septic system. I mean, that's how I'm looking at this. Same here. It's about the septic. And, yeah. I mean, if it was a new development project, I might have a different kind of opinion and agree with you, Carol, on that kind of criteria. But since it's kind of been there for I don't know how long, I don't know how old the house is, but whatever they've been doing since, you know, it's been the lawn has been maintained in its current condition. Right. So I see this, you know, an opportunity to clean up the septic and an opportunity to clean up any um, ex excess nitrogen that might have been going right into the, the wetland. I have a looking at a chart here that shows for. 75% nutrient removal. Um, the minimum effective zone is about 30 feet and uh, maximum effective protective zone is from 30 feet up to 300 feet. So that's why I'm asking to. So, so I, I think I understand. I, I'm happy to make 
a motion again, and you can make an amendment to the motion. We can vote on it if you want. Um, so I, I make a motion to um, close the hearing, issue a permit for work and order conditions, uh, noting the perpetual condition of no dumping in the wetlands. Thomas, second. So Carol, do you have an amendment you wanna make? Sure, thank you. So I would like to amend that motion to um, to add as a condition our lawn guidelines. What are our lawn guidelines? We, we, we do have established. We, we do have established uh, lawn guidelines, lawn maintenance okay. guidelines. I can, um, John. It, we um, basically uh, seek to minimize the amount of fertilizer, minimize um, pesticide use, keep your grass at a higher, uh, mow at a higher level, um, and you know keep your keep your, your waste away from the wetland edge. And then the rest of the guidance speaks to um, creating the lawn. Okay. Right. I might add to that. I, there may be something in there, Andrea, about no for conventional fertilizer use within 100 feet of a resource area. But uh, it, it's it's, it's sure an that. encouragement. Um, we don't, it, it, it's not, um, it's, it's listed as an encouragement. Okay, thanks for clarifying. So do, I, so, so do I have a second on the amendment? Uh, so seeing no second, uh, the amendment fails. Uh, so uh, let's get back to the main motion. Uh, motion on the floor is a permit for work order conditions, uh, noting the perpetual condition of uh, no, dump, uh, no dumping in the wetlands. And it, and that's seconded by uh, John Thomas. Roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundin abstain. Spady aye. Thomas aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 40 School Street. Again, uh, Peter Lyons from Colin MJ. <clears throat> that's me again. Uh, you guys seeing the correct drawing here? Yep, yes, we see it. Okay. Uh, this is 40 School Street, existing four bedroom home. We're doing a notice of intent for a septic repair, again, on a failed system. Uh, we have a bordering vegetated wetland line pretty much encompassing the whole property, starting at flag one, wrapping around the rear, and ending at flag 16. Our proposal is to replace the existing. Uh, septic tank with a combination of a 1500 gallon septic tank and a thousand gallon pump chamber. And we're pumping up to the front area of the lawn, uh, which is, well, not the lawn, pumping up to the front portion of the property, which is partial lawn, and then it encroaches into an existing wooded area. Um, obviously, our intent here is to keep the components as far from the resource as possible. The, ta the tanks have to be out back due to the existing plumbing. Um, that's pretty much the short answer for that. The field, we were able to um, get decent test holes in the front of the property, but we have a high groundwater, so we are dealing with a mounded system of approximately three feet above existing grade. Um, this area is to be cleared of trees and brought to a loam and seeded uh, final condition. We've proposed erosion, erosion control starting at the back of the property around the tanks into the existing wooded area and wrapping around the, the front. Uh, paralleling School Street. This should sufficiently contain any sediment um, within the limit of work. <clears throat> uh, across the street, we also have another BVW. The 50 foot buffer falls in front of the house. And we have another um, BVW on the side of the road. So we're really kind of sandwiched right in the middle of all of those three systems. Our typical notes on here 
uh, keeping the site clean, sweeping up. This one does have DEP for a notice of intent. Um, silt sacks in the catch basins. The catch basins are over here. Um, what else? Most of the basic town notes. I don't know if I have to read through them all. No, uh, we're good, Peter. You're good. <clears throat> uh, conservation posts proposed along the existing tree line, more or less, and then at the erosion control points uh, as staked in the field. We show our typical conservation post detail a little further up on the plan. Um, what else? Disturbance areas. Total disturbance, 7,400 square feet. Uh, all of that occurring within the 100 foot wetland buffer. Um, that is my. There's not, there's not much left on this property that's not in the 100 foot wetland buffer. So. No, this is really not. So, this is what we came up with. Um, that's my presentation. I'll listen to any questions. Um, so, I guess the, the, the one question is um, th this wooded, th this front port of the property um, is is wooded now it's got a uh, pretty um significant tree cover at that point and uh, how are you going to get to, you know i assume you're going to have to dig down you know 10 or 12 trees to, at least to get in there um varying in size some of those are smaller you know three or four inches but um do you, do you have a sense of how much you're going to have to you're not going to clear all that i assume you're not going to you're going to leave as many trees as possible um, we have to clear a good amount of it because other than just constructing the system, we have to get a, a big yeah. flat, you know, a tank truck in to deliver the tanks in the backyard. Yeah, I assume so. So, so I'm going to say, you know, we're going to try to save whatever trees we can, but we'll probably end up taking out the majority of, um, the work area as shown. Yeah. And. Again, that's to accommodate some moving around of materials. Um, you know, <clears throat> we're doing, let's see. Yeah, we have a real deep strip out of uh, almost 10 feet of soil that has to come out of here. So there's going to be a lot of trucks in and off the property, um, a lot of digging. So I would I would realistically anticipate that this this whole a limit of work gets cleared out or most of it um any of these trees that are left along the street are you know probably going to end up in the contractor's way um, obviously we don't want any existing roots near the system or potential for the future growth into it so we try to get rid of the bigger trees within 10 or 15 feet um, of the edges of the system regardless so I guess if that answers your question, um, by the time they blow this all out, there's not going to be much left um, inside of the work limit for remaining vegetation. Just, just one of it on the record, Peter. Yep, sure. Uh, anybody else have any comments for 40 School Street? None for me. Oh, you look like you had one, John. Uh, I was just, you know, I, I'm not going to, you know, I'll bring it up. Um, Peter, did you actually look at potentially abandoning the back system and then potentially putting the system in the front next to the leaching field? Um, I might be mishearing your question. I think that's kind of what we did. Well, no, I mean the what you what you have currently in the back. Oh, the tanks, you mean? The tanks, yeah. Um I mean, yeah. is there really is there really any advantage for you to bring it to the front versus having it in the back based on grades? It's mostly an issue with the existing plumbing. Um mm -hmm. whenever possible, obviously um we try to use the existing plumbing on the outside. Typically, it's an issue with the inside. You know, if this is a finished basement, um, right. 
you don't want to go messing with that pipe right even if not finished if that pipe's coming out low at the back of the house um typical rule of thumb you know with the septic system is we want to keep the pipes all up as high as we can right so by the time you make the run across the house and out the other wall it's you actually put, more uh more detrimental to the area two, yeah yeah you could end up a foot or two lower and now you're dealing with putting your inverts of the tanks into or near closer to the groundwater mm -hmm. um so as they are now we have yeah, we have adequate separation between the inverts of the tank and groundwater. But if we had to make that run further around the house, I don't think that would be the case. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Yep. Um, it's it's really the issue is the existing plumbing location. Sometimes we change that and we could, you know, there are some situations we can reroute the plumbing bring it up three feet higher and come right out the side of the house, you know, skip the pump chamber. This isn't one of those cases. So we try to avoid the pump chamber systems whenever possible. Um, a lot of times, you know, with the existing homes, it's inevitable and we end up needing it. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, this this is a, a split level, so it's most likely has a finished basement too, so. Yeah. Definitely not a lot of room to work with, that's for sure. No, not <laughs> at all. I'm looking at it now, it's insane. Oh, and um, I just looking at this quickly right now, uh, we can't change the plumbing because it comes out under the slab already. Oh. So sometimes if it comes out through the foundation wall, it's more accessible. So, you know, unless we came out of the side of the house and ran the pipes around the outside of the house, um, it still brings you back to the same. The tanks would end up too low just based on the run you need to make to the tanks. Right. And that's so not practical. Yeah, gotcha. You know, this is where they need to be. Um, it's in an existing lawn area. You know, you're not going to notice them afterwards. It's going to be a very small hump. Um, it's not really a big deal. Pretty common practice. Yep. Given all the wear and tear of the machines going out, the tank trucks going in the back, I wonder if our former commissioner, Bill Humphrey, might see this as a, uh, a, a site where he might suggest using steel plates to help reduce uh, compaction, erosion, disruption. Anybody's thoughts about that? I, I can start you off, I guess. Um, Typically, you know, the steel plates are really used if we're trying to protect, you know, utilities, um, existing lawn and stuff that's not going to get beat up. Uh, there's, there's no way around kind of making a mess and blowing out this site. At the end of it, the whole site's going to be regraded and, you know, re -loam and seeded. It's not just going to be where the components are. It's going to be all the access areas are addressed too. Um, I think you know, it's, it's a lot of extra time to deal with putting plates and stuff down for really not much of a reason. Uh, like I said, it, it's all going to be restored at the end of the project. You know, it's, it's kind of just an extra burden on the contractor to deal with that, but I'll listen to what else the commission has to say, but that's my opinion. Thank you, Peter. Any other uh, questions from the commission? Uh, any public comment on 40 School Street? So uh, seeing none, uh, Peter, I assume you want to close? Yes, please. Um, I am uh, going to make a motion to uh, close the hearing and issue a permit for work and order conditions for 40 School Street, um, noting a perpetual condition and no dumping in the wetlands. Thomas, a second. second. Oh. <laughs> uh, roll call vote. Callfells, aye. Lundin, aye. Eddie, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay. Another one down, Peter. Uh, next one up is you again, 65 Union Street. All right, this is my last one.
Okay, I assume you guys can see this one. Yep. Okay, um, this is another notice of intent for a residential septic repair. Quick overview of the site. Off-site to the northwest, we have a intermittent stream with the mean high water delineated flags one through six. Uh, paralleling the stone wall on the western lot line is a BVW, which then cuts into the rear of the property and uh, fades off towards the southeast. Sorry to move around too much on you. We also have the other side of that system on the opposite end of Union Street with the mean high and associative um, BVW flags delineated. This project, our proposal is to abandon the existing system, which is a septic tank on the side and a leaching bed that wraps around the front of the house. We're going to take the same plumbing location, provide a 1500 gallon two compartment septic tank in the lawn and then out back to a approximately 20 by 33 foot um, leaching field of plastic infiltrator chambers. This was a really tough site. Um, the front yard, the first holes we hit ledge at two feet. The test holes in the back revealed um, about yeah eight to ten feet of fill. So um, after a lot of poking, we found suitable test pits one and two right out centered behind the house. Um, the proposed system is situated in existing lawn. Groundwater is relatively deep, so we're not ending up with any grading changes on the property. Um, we don't anticipate any tree removal or vegetation um, modification. The areas that will be disturbed are all currently lawn. They'll be going back to that condition once they're done. We've, as always, proposed erosion control around the project, parallel in the lot line, around the proposed components, and back up to the driveway. Um, we show a stockpile area between the garage and the porch area of the house. <clears throat> we show the dewatering pit location as the old test pit to be re-excavated. Uh, details straw wattle and dewatering pit shown on the plan. What else? Conservation posts proposed around the entire tree line starting at the front. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six conservation posts. Um, pretty straightforward septic repair project. That's my presentation. And any questions from the commission? We should have plenty of room on this one. <laughs> uh, at first glance, yeah, but like I said, it, it took a bunch of test holes to find somewhere suitable to place the system. But uh, after a half a dozen tried, we found some dirt, so we made it work. Right on. So, Peter, can you just describe um, where the 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 potential vernal pool is offsite on this and, and where the boundary is to that? Sure, I apologize. Let me switch to a different view. It might be a little easier. You can see it with the black background. Um, so on our plan right here, this is a 100 foot setback to a potential vernal pool. Um, the 200 foot line cuts through the back of the house. Uh, so if, if we offset, it's the best way to do this. Uh, the potential vernal pool is somewhere just off site. Yep. Um, we did take field measurement to it on the day of the park test. So this little line here is, you know, a, a very rough approximation of where it actually is. Mm -hmm. uh, the vernal pool itself got cut off of the plan view just to fit everything else. So that's why it's not shown. But um, we do have an accurate, we, there's a flag in the field locating the closest edge of it. And these 100 foot lines are accurate measures relative to the field location of that potential vernal pool. 
Yeah, you can see it on the satellite mapping for sure. Okay, thank you for I clarifying, Peter. Available, but you probably can. Yeah. Uh, any um, any other questions uh, for for Peter? No. So um, the one one comment before I go to public comment is um, I, I think that the um, it was proposed in the um, in the staff notes that um, given the this potential vernal pool being off site that this um, area over by wetland flags six which is this uh, little part on the southern southeastern part yet yeah, right there. Yeah. Where this the lawn starts to slope off, uh, the proposal was to put the concept move the conservation post up to the limit of work and allow that to naturalize. Um, I, I'm more inclined to um, maybe suggest that maybe we take it 12 or 15 feet off that limit of work. If you take a straight line from that corner of the limit of work to the wetland flag six, and um, and come off about. 12 or 15 feet where it starts to slope off that maybe we put the the um the conservation post there and allow the land on that sloped area to naturalize okay um just so we know what you're talking about i can move it quickly out here yep. somewhere that, that looks perfect sure Okay, and uh, something like this, I mean, I typically do the, the layout. I put the stakes and tell them where to put the things. So ideally, something like this, you know, we could put in the order, and then I could revise the location in the field and pick it up on the as-built plan uh, would be my question. Uh, so that, that, thank you, Peter, for doing that so quickly. I'm glad you have control of it now. <laughs> yeah. I can just um, ask Peter to take a screenshot of this picture um, so that we know how he re he's revising the plan. And send me the screenshot. Might take me a minute, but yeah, I'll get it. No, you can send it tomorrow. I, I have it saved here. Okay. There you go. I'll send it to you. Someone got I, it. Yeah, I did. I just, I'm just saving it so I don't lose it. Sure. Um, I mean, I could have done it. <laughs> <laughs> anything you can see, you can take a screen cap of. So don't put anything up you don't want seen. Um, uh, so uh, any any uh, any other commissioner comments for um, sixty five Union? Murray, just a great job um, remembering about Andrea's suggestion to move that medallion. So between the great. two of you, great job. <laughs> Was their suggestion? I only came up with the middle of it, so you remembered it. <laughs> um, any uh, any public comment on sixty five Union? Okay, so uh, seeing none, uh, Peter, I assume you want to close. Yes, please. Okay, so um, so I will make a motion to close issue permit for work in order conditions for 65 Union Street, uh, noting that the uh, conservation post um, closest to wetland flag six has been moved as indicated on the plan. Um, Peter will relocate that in the field. Um, I will get the screenshot to Andrea. Um, and uh, noting um, no uh, perpetual condition, no dumping in the wetlands. Um, so roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundin aye. Spady aye. Thomas aye. Okay, Peter, I think that's it for you tonight. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, yeah, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Good you job, know. Peter. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so uh, next up is uh, 370 Center Street. This is a notice of intent for construction of a duplex home um, on an existing lot. I promoted uh, both the engineer, Frank Gallagher, and um, the applicant, 
Mr. L. Ferry, to panelists. Uh, so, Frank, uh, do you do you want me to bring up the plans, or do you uh, want to bring them up yourself? Yeah, well, if you could bring them up, I don't think I quite know how to bring them up. Honestly. Okay, I, I will do that for you then. Okay. He is a whiz at it, Frank. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm still kind of learning all of this. Good. Okay, so uh, here is the plan. Let me just see. I'll give up back out a little bit so we can see the entire um, lot here. So this is uh, Center Street here. Uh, the orientation of north is to your right. Uh, there's an existing home uh, that's in the middle of the property right here. So um, just to give the commissioners a, a what we're looking at here, uh, there is an existing drive that comes in this way. There's um, a turnaround and whatnot. Um, it's covered in asphalt here as well. Um, and I think the existing uh, septic system is a bleaching pit that's here. Um, and uh, there's an old pool here that I assume is going to get abandoned. And uh, the wetlands here are along the south part of this property. It's a very long piece of property. And so we'll let you go from there, Frank. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, it's about a four acre parcel. The address is 370 Center Street, and there is an existing house uh, on the site. There is an just, a, just one, one, one thing before we go. There, we did an ANRAD on this uh, a year or two ago, so there is an existing ANRAD. These, uh, these wetland lines were confirmed um, and an ANRAD issued or an ORAD issued uh, back in 2018. Correct. So we're dealing with a wetland line that the commission's already approved. Um, and uh, so there is an existing house and pool, but the property, if anyone's been out there, you'll see it. The house is in a condition where it just needs to be torn down. And um, the, it's been abandoned for quite some time. I couldn't tell you how long, but it's the house is sat abandoned for, for some number of years. Um, so the applicant, Mr. Alfieri, would like to um, tear down that house and build a duplex in its place. Uh, we've already dealt with um, the planning board and we've received from them a special permit uh, to build a duplex on the property. Uh, so that's what we're proposing and that's what you'll see. It's sort of a it's two units that sort of form a V. If you look, there's a garage on each end. They're joined in the middle where you'll see a 24 foot uh, dimension, I think on the plan. Uh, a garage on either end of the two units. Um, the driveway comes, mostly it follows um, the existing driveway. Uh, but then at a point it branches off and at another point it extends so that it can reach the um, the garage that's to the most uh, easterly end of the um, duplex. Uh, we are calling for the pool to be removed. You'll see grading lines that cross over the pool. So, so that's going to be removed and then regraded and converted into a lawn. There, there are test holes that have already been done out there, and you can see where we have two separate uh, septic system areas. We have two separate leaching fields that are kind of side by side, uh, a, a separate tank coming out of each unit. Uh, it's all gravity flow septic system, but because of that, it, it means that we do have to do some filling on the site to to raise the um, units to a point where we can get gravity flow into the septic system. Uh, and you'll see that we have um, an erosion control barrier at the limit of work uh, on this plan, I guess, as you're looking at it, you'll see it on kind of on the left-hand side of where you see all the grade lines. Um, and then at a point, if you continue east, I guess, you'll see that we have a retaining wall shown uh, just inside of the 50 foot buffer. Um, 
and uh, and then what um, I guess what I want to also point out is there is quite a bit of grading involved in this, but there's not that much tree clearing because we're dealing mostly with existing lawn area and existing driveway area, um, area that's already been kind of cleared and maintained for many years that's associated with the house. Um, at the planning board's request though, if you look, you can, you'll see that the back of the, um, the duplex is pretty close to that side lot line. Uh, it's only uh, 16 feet, which is really only a foot beyond what the minimum zoning calls for. We had to push it as far as we could to the north just to try to uh, keep ourselves out of the wetland buffer, the 50 foot wetland buffer in particular. So we kept it tight to that lot line and um, the planning board, when they reviewed it, said, well, you know, they don't have a heck of a lot of backyard. So because of that, if you just go um, up with the plan a bit, you'll see that um, the existing tree line cuts through that garage um, that's at the easterly end of the, um, of the, yep, right in there. And we're proposing to cut the tree line back to where we've shown our erosion control. So we're clearing um, some area between the 50 and the 100 foot buffer zone, uh, just so that whoever winds up living in that unit will have uh, some yard there. But um, other than that, uh, I mean, it's pretty, pretty standard. It's buffer zone work, um, duplex rather than a single family home. Uh, but we've, you know, done our best to maintain the the, the buffer zones, and um, we've got erosion control shown as a hay bale and silt fence barrier. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. Um, so th there are a number of trees that I think you agreed with on the front part of the property to the planning and zoning you'd re you'd retain, right? Right. And the planning board was, that was a concern of theirs because Center Street is, um, uh, let me see, there's a term I think that they used, maybe it wasn't, it was historic or scenic, but it's one of the sort of special streets in town that, um, and that uh, they, and you, you know, it's a, it is a really pretty street and they want to maintain that look as much as they can. So, so they asked us to locate a lot of the trees that were up near Center Street and so that we could specifically make sure we, we retain those trees. So I, I guess um, one of the questions that I have here is um, you have this grading, so you're going to have to remove all the trees, obviously, all the way back to here, mm -hmm. um, which... Um, a lot of trees. I have to look back at the scale here, but I mean, that's about 40, 40 feet of trees just to get to the grading because this mm -hmm. is the edge of the house right now, mm -hmm. of the existing home. So yeah. to get back out here is about 40 feet. It's about another 40 feet of clearing here. This this isn't just a couple of <laughs> trees here. Do you, have, do you have a sense of, of how many trees? Well, and, 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 and real quick for maybe you answer that, but looks like there's plenty of room in the front yard for if they want to have if these two residents want to have a yard and was that ever thought about before clearing these trees in the back it just doesn't seem like that's necessary um yeah i think that uh, well again going back to our hearing with the planning board um i think they would i guess they would there was there is a uh, lawn area on the west side of uh, the units but I think they thought that, well, that's more likely to be used by that Western unit. Um, and I think they thought that by the time we got to this unit on the easterly side, they would need some lawn that was kind of associated with their house. So that's what, um, I think that's what went into their request that we do that. 
I mean, so I mean, I think I mean, one thing to just sort of point out here, this line here that follows the erosion control and it's, it continues off this way, that's the 50 foot um, buffer zone. So yeah. this, th this is the, the 100 foot goes through right through the corner of the garage and then part of the home. That's... Um, so. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm just pointing out, you know, we're, we're clearing in the, the in the, the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the 50 is being left as no disturb. So um, I, I just, so I mean, my, my, my concern is, I mean, when I was out there, there are, it is an awful lot of trees. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, you're talking about clearing probably close to 80 to 100 feet, linear feet by maybe 25 or 30 feet of trees. Um, I think that we probably got to find a happy medium on there. Um, yeah, I understand that the planning and zoning board wants to be able to give the, um, the people some backyard. And I think we need to probably um, offset that with what the, the wetland uh, issues might be here, since we're right up against the, uh, um, the boundary of the no disturb zone. Um, that, that's just, I think we may have to sort of, you know, split that area at the, at the least um, and say, you know, enough clearing, you know, we, we'll give them, you know, 20 or 30 feet of backyard maybe um, and let that be it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my thought. Get, you have, you have a ton of, I just don't understand why we have to give them anything in the backyard when the whole, there's a huge front yard with the driveway. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, that's, you know, the you, know, you, know, you could clear looks like i'm looking at it that you can clear maybe four or five trees in the front and have a, a substantial you're going to get rid of the pool so you're going to have a substantial amount of room I mean, it's four acres of land you know, yeah. so you know cutting all these trees away in the back i don't know um i could maybe make a suggestion and and an offer if you'd like um if you look at that area that you're concerned with um, you'll see that we have a slope. We have proposed grade lines that lead, you know, lead to a slope. And at the, you know, and you can see that where those heavy lines end, there's no proposed grading beyond that point. We're just saying that we'll clear. Um, I could locate whatever trees are in that area because, I mean, I think we'd have the option of uh, saving any trees that are of any value and just make it kind of a, a grass tree combination. You know, I could do the same thing I did up front, just locate all the trees and maybe say anything 12 inches in diameter or over, we could uh, keep. Yeah, I'm, so I think Carol, you're probably gonna probably say the exact same moment to say so. But I'm just concerned about habitat loss as well. And size or not or anything significant. I mean, cutting that much in the rear, I don't know. But I'll, I'll let Carol go. Mm -hmm. Right. So speaking of wildlife habitat, Frank, according to our staff report, this project site is in mapped wildlife habitat. Mm -hmm. So that hasn't really come up so far. Okay. So I don't see anything in the uploaded documents about that re that wildlife habitat report and I'm certainly not in favor of removing trees from a mapped wildlife area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Andrea, can you speak to this? All right. Um, I'm in. So you're absolutely right. I it is mapped habitat where it is where it is not um, presently house and residential area. So back in the uh, level area that he's speaking of, um, you could have some habitat. Yeah, I don't know what type of wildlife it is though. Yeah, I would kind of like to see that report and know what it is. S same here, please. Okay. Uh, to yes. do that, you have to make a request of uh, natural heritage, and they could take up to 30 days to get the response back. 
so uh, thank you, Andrea. And so here's another question. What about um, the, the idea of a conservation restriction? Any thoughts on that? I think she's speaking to you, Frank. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, I guess what would what would that involve? Would it it would be something that went with the deed of the property, or something that's tied to the title of the property, right? And um, I mean, typically, what would that consist of? Just something that says that it's you know going to be maintained as it is. Uh, once the construction work's done, um, I don't really know, you know, just what what a conservation restriction would would really entail, honestly. If I could speak to that, a um, a conservation restriction often is a, um, a is a templated document where the state approves the the uh, restriction and you actually give the restriction to a third party to hang on to, to, to maintain, to make sure that it's um, being maintained as such. It might be the town, it might be the natural resource trust. They are theoretically are supposed to come in on an annual basis and double check, make sure that there's no intrusion into the CR. But, but a true CR, um, the state would not accept in this case because it's a small, I don't think, because it's a very small um, lot uh, comparative to what they see and there'd be no public access associated with it. So it would be perceived of as a way to reduce taxes more than get a true benefit from it. Um, it a deed restriction can be placed, a regular, a regular restriction, a regular statement can be placed on your deed that creates the same effect of not being, um, not of not extending your property, but there would be not extending your clearing, but there'd be no third party holding on to it. Well, that's something that I guess we we could consider. I'd have to talk to the applicant. Please. Well, I think is listening in with us. I'm not sure, but but yeah. I mean, I couldn't give you a word here and now as to as to whether they'd accept a deed restriction. Or not. I'd like to to um. Sorry, go ahead. No, this is uh, Alex Alfieri, the applicant. Uh, Frank, I am here listening. Okay. Um, if there's any comment I need to make, I don't want to interrupt anybody, but. It's, I'll, I'll wait to the end if that's the proper way to do it. You can go ahead. Um, I don't really remember the rear of the property in terms of a, a number of great amount of trees. I do remember a lot of, uh, I, I, of uh, I guess, just shrubs, shrubbery, and um, kind of like overgrown debris. <clears throat> I, I haven't been out there since probably uh, early spring, but I'd like to try to review it with Frank again and see if we can limit the amount of trees being removed in the essence of the concern of that being proposed for the backyard because the side yard and the front yard, like another gentleman indicated, you know, once this is all properly landscaped, excavated and groomed, there would be a lot of area there to, to be, uh, to present it to be attractive to the building itself with still a lot of the natural surroundings around the side and back. So if the trees are the limiting factor that's a concern here, uh, again, I'm not sure I understand the whole sloping process of how much clearing there needs to be, but you know, if there's a hundred feet, that seems pretty extreme, but you know, who wants a hundred foot backyard? I mean, to most people, a 30 foot backyard is just fine. If that can be limited, Frank, in some reasonable manner, I don't know. I think it can. So just to give you some sense, that's that's looking from about where the, the line is for that limit of clearing. So to give you a sense of what the tree cover is at that point, you can see the house way up in there, about the mm -hmm. center of the screen, but 
Um, but that's, I'm looking towards the house from that spot where it in, intersects that rock wall. Yeah, the middle, the middle is, I think, is a utility pole. The yeah. perfectly straight yeah, pole. Correct, so correct. That's, yeah. the path, that's the path along the side of the rocks. I don't that's, see the house, but. Yeah, it's, so it's there. Okay. The, so the, the, doing, house, yeah. the house is up here somewhere. Yeah. So. All right. So how much of that would need to be cleared? Let's just take from that utility pole all the way back to the utility pole or somewhere in between it? Because again, um, I think right directly behind the house, there's a little utility shed, not a utility shed. I, I guess it is like a utility maintenance uh, closet that was used for the plumbing and heating of the house. And I just remember a slope going down into a lot of brush. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as, you know, physical trees being cleared, I didn't really think there were that many. Yeah, but again, I, if it has to be limited and you want to meet halfway or something, I guess I'll, you know, Frank and I can work it out. And, you know, if there's just a big slope off the backyard, there's a big slope off the backyard going downward. But yeah, anybody, so, so, would, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so no, absolutely. Thank you for the, the, the input and the, the uh, willingness to work with us on this. I mean, I, I think from um, our um, standpoint, um, since you're going to bring in Phil to, to, to um, change the grade to um, to raise these houses up a little bit. That's where you get some of the sloping coming off the back of the house. Um, I, I think that there's a couple things here. One is um, understanding what the wildlife habitat is here and what the rare spe the map rare species is. Um, the the second thing being um, that trying to understand what the removal of those trees are might do to that wildlife habitat. Um, I think that's uh, a couple of things uh, that are that we're sort of addressing here. I think those two are linked together um, from the sense that, that one goes with the other. Um, we really can't discuss one without discussing the other. Um, and I think the, the other thing that we haven't even asked about yet is I think we do need, um, once we determine where that retaining wall is, we do need to see detail on that retaining wall since it's right up against the um, um, right up against the buffer zone uh, boundary for the no disturb zone. So, um, mm -hmm. anybody anybody else on the commission have uh, comments? I think I tried to cover what we we talked about here. Sure, thank you. What do what do we have for an existing for for a slope there, according to the the plans? Um, the existing slope, let me just measure that for a second. What's the percent? Let's see. Um, let's see. It's about uh, between 10 and 15. And where they narrow is about 10 feet between the contours and then in other areas, 15. So. So that's between 10% as the steepest slope because those are one foot contours. Um, so that's one in 10 as a drop. And then it flattens out to, to one in 15. So that would be, I guess, about a 7% slope. So between seven and 10%. Right, thank you. So I'd like to show you something from the Mass Association of Conservation Commissioners buffer zone guidebook. Uh, it shows a slope adjustment factor um, based on different slope gradients and suggests additional buff buffer multipliers based on the slope. Show it to you right here. You see that? Mm -hmm. So with your 10%, mm -hmm. the MACC is suggesting for water quality to use that multiplying factor to increase the size of the buffer. Uh, excuse me, I, um, I believe they're speaking of the slope of the undeveloped area, so that if you have a slope going toward the wetland, right, then the, the greater, then you want to have, then you want to have a, a larger um, undeveloped area so that it has the ability that the slope has um, the ability to sort of peter out anything happening, uh, any of the erosion control or water coming in. I don't think it's speaking of proposed grade changes up in this area. 
Right. We I have a pretty level, we have a pretty level near a uh, natural area. Uh, the buffer itself is, the, the buffer zone itself is relatively natural. It was his proposed grading that is mm -hmm. steep at, at 10% to 7%. Right. So I wonder, are you suggesting that this multiplier effect doesn't apply for water quality? I mean, I'll, I, I'm saying that the, mul the multiplier is based on the slope of the buffer zone coming from the wetland to the end of the disturbed area that that you don't want a you don't want the the, the greater the slope in a natural area the, the greater the air the great the greater the width of the buffer zone needs to be right in this case you have a flat buffer zone uh -huh. okay we do in fact we have well it drops about three feet in approximately 80 feet in the area that's approaching the wetlands. So it is it is a lot flatter in that area that we're not going to disturb. So and Carol, you want to have a you want to get that that's a pretty flat area approaching. The so if you look at this plan, you he's got a he's got a retaining wall where it's steep where the slope is steepest. So any drainage or rolling balls are going to go to the side of the um, retaining wall, either to the north or I guess you should be looking to the south. Um, and so you want to so you want to flatten out. You want to have a, a larger flat area at the bottom of that. Do you, uh, uh, Frank? Am I? Yeah, are you making? Is, am I making any sense to you? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can I ask a question, Frank? Um, in the back corner of this garage, where we have your, um, where you have your uh, elevation lines, mm -hmm. I think you have a hundred. Then you go to ninety-five, then ninety. Oh, no, one hundred ninety-nine, ninety-eight. So those are feet, correct? So. Right. Is that a slope from 100 down to 98 feet? So it's two yeah. feet. Yeah. What is that? What was the predicted distance of that two foot slope? In other words, is that a span of 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet? Um, well, that's a that's a three to one slope the way that's graded. So that means for every three feet you go out horizontally, yeah. you're dropping a foot. Okay, so that's three six nine feet. So it's like 10 feet off the corner of the garage to drop three mm -hmm. feet. Yeah. All right. All right. So it is, I mean, it is three to one is not what you, not ideal, but, um, but that's, that's what we have. So, but it isn't a, it isn't a steep drop off like a cliff either. <clears throat> no, it's, it's you know, manageable. You can mow it. You can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you showed that all the way down to 90. Mm -hmm. Um, let's yeah, get down to like 98. That's right, down to 98. What are the other four lines after that? Is that just those are those are that's a, that's a continuation of the slope. So we go from mm -hmm. 100 all the way probably down to like 92 feet. Um, no, no, he's got the, the uh -huh. grade is getting raised from 102 up to 100. And, or 103 up to 106. Yeah, it's being raised by four feet. Right. Okay. Yeah, so he starts out higher than 100. This is this line here is actually 106. Correct. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can't see very well. Okay. So out of that 106 down to 98, the eight the eight feet is mm -hmm. is also incumbent of the garage. Area. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. I, I'm just trying to picture going out to the wooded area that was a concern of cutting down trees. Mm -hmm. Again. You know, walking out the back of that garage, the door, which is in the corner and turning right, you know, you're going to have right now about 12 feet of grass that's going to have a mild slope. Mm -hmm. And then where's it going to go? Back into the original grade? Yep, correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so I think that 
Um, I think the one one other question here um, is if there's any going to be any um, any handling of any of the stormwater runoff from the home or the driveway. I didn't know if that was uh, being considered here. It's not. I don't necessarily see it on the plan. Yeah, I don't have anything shown in that regard. I mean, it's. Uh, you know, it's all going to basically just become surface runoff at the moment, unless the commission wants us to do something different. So do we have a sense of what the change in um, impervious surface is here from existing conditions to the proposed conditions? I mean, this, this line here is the, I think this is the hundred. It goes right approximately through the center of the house. Um, there is pavement as well as, are, are you removing all, I assume you're removing all of this pavement. Yes. Yeah, that would have to be removed. Yes. Yeah. So I, I just don't know if there's been any calculations to determine if there's been an increase in impervious here um, in, in the buffer zone, um, mm -hmm. in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. I, I think we need to know that to okay. understand whether or not we should be um, dealing with increased stormwater runoff? I can get that. I, I haven't done that up to now, but I can I can run that calculation for you. Yeah, I mean, Frank, Frank, what I'm trying to do here is trying to get, there's some information we're going to need to proceed, so I'm trying to get you the whole list. I'm not trying to overwhelm you, obviously. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to get some, um, some of that information so the next time you come before us, we mm -hmm. can then have everything we need to be able to answer all of our questions. Any other questions for other commission members? This is Carol. I have one more thing to, to chime in about. Um, uh, we're talk we have been talking, Frank, about um, removing some number of trees from that southernmost area mm -hmm. to give the, the residents more lawn. Right. Yeah. And that is, uh, in the outer 50 foot buffer, is that right? Correct, it is. Right, so uh, if I could share my screen, how do I do that? Go to your name. Share, share screen. Have you done it? Yep, go to the bottom of your screen and share screen. It'll, it'll be a little green icon. Okay, share screen. Okay. Then, give you, then you highlight the, the screen you want to share. Great. Here we go. Can you see a color chart? Yes. Okay. So um, you're in a you're in a mapped habitat area. This is a chart about um, minimum core habitat width for wildlife protection and optimal. Mm -hmm. um, here's our wetland. So what, what I want to look at here is it's not only the trees that we're talking about. If we're looking for nutrient removal. Um, the minimum effective protection zone is in blue. So for nutrient re removal, that has to do with water quality. The minimum effective is something like maybe 35 feet. Yeah. And maximum effective is, is more than that. Mm -hmm. Same for sediment. Sediment's even lower than that. It's more like two, oh, two, two, three, four, five. So these are in blocks of 20. Yes. So that's about... 20 feet is a minimum mm -hmm. and more than 20 is much better. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking about removing trees, um, we also have to, if you want to put lawn in there, that also re probably means removing the native soil that's there, the duff layer, which is like a sponge. Mm -hmm. So that will also impact um, water movement and um, uh, perhaps flooding. Because mm -hmm. okay. if, if that spongy layer isn't there, um, it can't absorb water and manage the flow of it. Mm -hmm. Also, we have migrating songbirds who need a minimum of 50 feet and for optimum 50 feet and over. So a lot of songbirds live and, and need trees for food and shelter. Mm -hmm. So that's another wildlife aspect to carol carol sorry to cut you off i'm actually reading the wetland report from goddard consulting right now 
and yep. the site is not mapped within NHESP. She's uh, Goddard is dealing with two twenty six massive. Yeah, I'm looking. Look, is this Center Street? We're on Center Street. Yeah, this is the three Center Street report that I'm looking at right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize Goddard did work over there. I'm looking at 370 Center Street in Easton. My and apologies. That's all right. And I'm looking at it right now, and I just wanted to correct everybody. It doesn't look like any data layers are for NHESP. So, Was I reading off the wrong report? Might May have been. We might have got it mixed up. Staff report. Uh, no, my, my, uh, I, I might have also, because my staff report says that it's estimated habitat. So um, I apologize for this. That was my that was my error. Let me. So so why don't why don't we uh, circle back on that um, after the meeting, Andrea, and you can circle with Frank and just to make sure he gets the proper direction on on what he needs to do from a wildlife standpoint. It does um, it does impact our approach to um, that area for sure. Um, you know, we have to take it into consideration. I mean, there, there's still other wildlife considerations that Carol's bringing up um, right. in general. So, I, I mean, I agree with what Carol's saying in, in general for sure. And that's one of the reasons why I raised the issue was just understanding that um, I didn't want all those trees cleared because of the wildlife. Um, I mean, it's a wooded area now. So, I mean, it has wildlife function there. So, um, so, I, so I think that we probably need to work that out, Frank, before you take any more steps. I, I don't need you to go to natural heritage if it's not mapped. Um, right. So um, so we'll, we'll straighten that out before we go that way. But I think we do have some other things to, to deal with before we settle in on how much tree removal. It seems like the applicant, Mr. Alfieri, um, is open to maybe making that area a little bit smaller um, mm -hmm. than was originally proposed. Um, and you've offered some other alternatives as far as maybe taking some of the smaller trees down and leaving some of the bigger ones um, and helping uh, create um, a, a mixed use uh, type of situation. But we might have to have that discussion at our next meeting. Um, a, I can, a better I can, understand. I can share my screen. Um, John is absolutely right. Okay. Uh, Carol, uh, can I share my screen? Oh, do I have to do something? Uh, is it okay if I stop you from sharing? Sure. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So centers, this is Center Street. This property here, I have um, mapped habitat listed. Um, the layer's on and there's nothing in the area. If I zoom out, we're in the middle of center, we're in the middle, the center of town. The closest mapped habitat is down off of Depot Street. My apologies to you all. It is not in mapped habitat. Okay, I'm coming back here. Uh, definitely an extensive wetland. It's not the correct, you know, we, we identified it uh, differently in the field, but an extensive wetland, not mapped habitat. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank I think you, John. That, yeah, thank you, John. Appreciate it. Um, so, I, I think that um, I think that the so um, I think that we um, we want to understand the change in impervious surface if there's a positive or negative uh, impact there. That may, you know, trigger some discussion on us as far as handling stormwater, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we may ask you to sort of ha have the driveway maybe tilt one way so it doesn't go towards the wetlands. Um, but um, we'll talk about that um, um, in general. Um, it's probably it's it's good it's good form to do it that way anyway, um, and I think that um, and then. The detail on the the retaining wall, so we understand it, the footings and what materials and, and the construction uh, that's going to be made there on that retaining wall and the the, the uh, west easterly portion of the property. Uh -huh. um, and I think then I think we'll just have to you guys come to us and propose something for that tree removal area, um, and we can 
we can decide there then at that point what we do. Okay. How, how does that sound? That sounds fine. Okay, so I think we, uh, uh, do we have any public comment on uh, 370 Center Street? Uh, raise your hand or, um, or post something in the Q&A and we'll, we'll, we'll make you so you can uh, speak and raise. Okay, so uh, I'm not seeing any, so um, we'll continue this to our next meeting, which is, when is our next meeting? 28th of September. 28th. You want to continue to the 28th, Frank? Yes, please. Uh, so I make I make a motion to continue to September 28th. Spady, a second. Uh, roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lynn Dean, aye. Spady, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay, thank you, Frank. Okay. And Mr. Alfieri, I appreciate it. Yes, thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Okay, so uh, next up is 59 Meeting House Lane. Uh, so uh, I'm going to wait for the Scots. Um, I see a um, I see a applicant as well. So I'm going to promote, um, I don't know, I think it might only be one applicant, um, but if anybody else um, is an applicant, please raise your hand and I'll promote you. Okay, so um, Scott, are uh, you there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yeah, great. So I just want to give a little bit of introduction here to the commission. So this is actually um, uh, an amendment to an order of conditions and permit for work. Um, this is a, a site that we had um, approved uh, notice of intent um, actually twice. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the original notice of intent expired in uh, June of 2019. Last fall, we had a, a separate notice of intent come before us. Uh, as well as um, there was an enforcement order um, that was uh, given on some restoration that was in, uh, done in a timely manner that has been uh, adhered to at this point. Um, the applicant is coming to us because uh, they want to change the location of the home and a little bit of the layout of the home. They're actually decreasing the size uh, of the home as well as um, changing the um, uh, driveway configuration and the length of the driveway, trying to shorten uh, the, the length of the driveway. So that's a very high level overview. This is the project uh, some of us may remember uh, from last fall. Um, I know that uh, Mike and Carol were on the, the, the commission at the time. So um, just giving us some perspective here. So Scott, you tell me what you want. If you want me to put up uh, the plans or I know there was a PowerPoint presentation, so I'll, I'll let you decide what you want to do. Do you mind putting up that site plan that we did? Sure. So this is the, the larger site plan. Um, And so you can see here, uh, Meeting House Lane is here, uh, and there is a, an entryway uh, off of Meeting House Lane, um, and it goes down into this uh, rear property. Um, this is where this uh, uh, wetland restoration area was, um, and uh, this, this house is located between two different wetlands, three different wetlands, actually. So, um, Scott, I, I can show you this, this one, or if you want the other one, let me know. This one will work for now. Yeah. So for the record, good evening. My name is Scott Rogers, JK Holmgren Engineering. With me tonight is Chris and Kelly Percio. Um, you got a, the, the background pretty well covered, but um, Chris and Kelly have purchased the property. And before they started to uh, build the home of their dreams here, they wanted to kind of do this the right way. So they met with the Conservation Commission and uh, 
the conservation agent. They also met with the planning board. They also uh, hired my firm and LEC to kind of help out with the permitting and the monitoring of what's going on with the, the wetland mitigation and all that. So as far as the uh, planting remediation plan, they are currently up to date. They've been working with the uh, Conservation Commission and they hired some professional landscapers. They did uh, plant a bunch of extra plants within the, the buffer zone enhancement area, the restoration area. And they've spent a lot of energy uh, with irrigation, trying to make sure that those plants survive. Uh, there wasn't a great survival rate earlier on. So that was one of the key issues that they had was they wanted to make sure that, you know, things were taking hold, if you will. So there was some monitoring that was done by LEC and it turns out it's been very successful. Even some of the plants that were planted earlier on uh, by the previous homeowner have actually come back. So uh, the work is, is working out pretty well. So as far as the proposed um, improvements here, so as you, as you mentioned, there was a previously approved site plan for uh, a, a rather large home. You can kind of see that it's actually to the east of the new house location that we're showing as hatched in gray. So the new, uh, the new footprint for the house is quite a bit smaller. It's about a little less than 3,500 square feet, where, whereas the old home was more in the vicinity of about 4,700 square feet. So they've, uh, they've made a serious reduction in the footprint of the, the house. They've also moved the house location in a more westerly direction, if you will, sort of towards Meeting House Lane, which uh, has a lot of benefits to it. Obviously, uh, one of the big benefits is that we're able to reduce the uh, length of the driveway and also the square footage of the driveway. Um, in addition, the old uh, location of the driveway, you can kind of see it, it kind of shoots off more towards the north, but it's a more meandering uh, path, which really just is, you know, there's great reasons for doing that. There was a, a garage under on that side of the house, but um, it really created a lot more linear footage and of course square footage for the driveway. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we could do our best to minimize the amount of, of driveway disturbance, uh, both in length and in square footage. So it's about a 15% reduction in uh, the size of the drive. The new driveway will be paved but we have uh, taken into account uh, some drainage concerns or drainage considerations. We will be super elevating the driveway as you get past the throat, if you will. It's almost like a, a pork chop lot for lack of a better term, but once you get past the throat of the, the driveway and it opens up into the large lot area, we'll be super elevating that driveway uh, towards the north, which will allow us to put in a, a grass swale and basically collect the runoff from the driveway into a new bioretention area, which is located uh, closer to the house uh, near the turnaround area. So that's some LID improvements that we made to the previously approved plan that really didn't exist before. And then um, lastly, there is a pretty good size area north of that grass swale and bioretention area that we're kind of calling a give back area. Um, it's about 7,500 square feet, which has basically been almost entirely cleared and, um, you know, disturbed. So what we're looking to do is basically uh, let that area be regraded and put in uh, topsoil and hydro seed and let that area be restored back to its natural state. Um, so we feel that, you know, between the, the building footprint reduction, the driveway improvements, both in the square footage and the linear footage of the driveway, also the drainage improvements we've made and the, uh, the good faith effort for the give back area that we've made uh, some pretty drastic uh, improvements to the previously approved plan that was uh, approved, as you mentioned, again, last year in 2019. So I guess I could answer any questions that you guys may have. Um, so there were some calculations on another page to give some sense of the square footage changes that you're making, um, just to give the commission some. So this is a little bit more of a detailed uh, view of, of what uh, Scott was talking about. Um, here is the former footprint of the other home. Um, you can see here the driveway does have a little bit of a curve in it. 
Um, it comes down to an area that was then in, under a garage. Um, and here you can see that they're shortening it a great deal and going straight into a garage that's here in this portion of it. The, 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 uh, the area that Scott's talking about um, as far as uh, allowing it to return to uh, naturalized vegetation is this area here. Um, I think that was on a, a prior um, prior page, so you can get a sense of. Um, so this this is the area that they were talking about there, and here you can also see the grass swale um, and the bioretention basin uh, with the driveway here that they're uh, treating any runoff here. Also on this page, I think you get some sense of uh, what the change in the plan is as far as um, um, increasing um, or decreasing the amount of, of, of area that's um, being um, taken up by the both the, the home and the driveway, as well as the 7,500 square feet that they are I'm proposing to um, allow to go back to a natural state. So I think uh, there's been a good summary of this. I'm open this up to uh, questions from the council. We, we talked about this last week, uh, last meeting three weeks ago, and we wanted to hear from the applicants uh, so that we understood uh, what was happening here because we felt it was a big enough change to not simply treat it as a minor amendment. So I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's a good idea that they came in. So. Any any questions from the commission? Okay. Um, anybody want to make a motion? I, I, I make a motion to. Uh, oh, actually, let's go to public comment. I, I think there may be some uh, comments on this. So before we do that, I do want to give the applicants. Um, so if you have any public comment on 59 Meeting House, um, just uh, raise your hand or put something in the Q&A box so I know to call on you. Okay, so um, not seeing any, um, I will uh, make a motion to uh, um, let me just see here. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything on the, the staff report. The wetland posts, Rory. Yeah, yeah. So what's the comment about the wetland posts? John, I'm missing it here. So, yeah, and I mean, I don't see them on the plan right now. They are on the plan. They're shown as kind of a, um, a circle with the crosshairs. Oh, that right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's one here. My my question about the wetland posts was whether or not the uh, post in the in the area that's going to be naturalized. Uh, was intended to be moved closer to the new driveway. If that isn't in, if if that isn't within the naturalized area. Yeah, that actually looks like it's in the naturalized area. So we can move those paragraph right ten, Rory. What's that? It was within paragraph ten. Yeah, no, I see it now. Thank you. Yeah. Before we go to um, motion, I would like. I feel like I need time, more time to look at this. And just immediately, a concern that I had is even though the footprint and square foot impacts are smaller, the northwest edge of the house, it's so close to the 50 foot buffer. Um, I'm not really thrilled with that. It's also, it's the buffer on the, the northwest and also on the, the southern side. It's, both of those are practically touching a 50 foot buffer. Um, so, Kara, I think your question is where's the limit of work really on the plan, right? Um, I'm looking at the red lines that show the 50 foot buffer. Right. 
and how close the house is on the northwest and the south to that 50 foot buffer. Okay. I mean, the, that, the purple that, line is the limit of work that was authorized in the original project. Right. Uh -huh. So where does that leave us if we care about disturbance inside the, the 50 foot buffer? Uh, I, I don't think I don't think we're we don't I don't think we have any disturbance inside the 50 foot buffer. Or well actually we, we do have some limit of work in, in the, but that was a that was originally approved in the original notice at the time. Right. I, I don't I don't think they're changing that portion of it. Right. It's just that, you know, the house is so much closer to the 50 foot now. I just wonder if there's. Can you, I, I don't know if we can, you can hear us or not, but uh, this is, yep. this is Chris Percio. So the original uh, work, the limited work area in the purple line at the Southern part of the property, uh, it's about 25 feet. So um, there, there's plenty, there's, there's plenty of room to bring, um, any needed construction equipment or excavating equipment or anything that needs to kind of go around the house. Um, so um, uh, um, we sought to move the house as far to the west as possible uh, because in going through past comments from this commission on this particular project, um, so even, even though the, the, the house was, was already approved for a much further setback, um, there had been some concerns by the by the commission about the length of the driveway. And so um, we purposefully moved the house as far to the west based on those comments actually, um, so that we could uh, limit the amount of driveway as much as possible. And, and we, also intentionally brought the driveway down the middle of the property. Uh, as you can see, so you can see that the 100 foot buffer, which is the, uh, the orange line, uh, we, we sought to maximize the amount of space uh, outside of the 100 foot buffer. That's why the driveway kind of comes right down the middle of the property. Um, and we're, we're kind of foregoing any, any, any kind of a large front yard that was part of the, the prior approved plan. So um, that was all, um, so the the but but specific to the uh, the point of uh, the the close proximity to the um, to the red line that was that was done intentionally to basically maximize the benefits of some of the comments that we had that we had read in in prior minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, any any further comments from the commission before? Um, so I would uh, make a motion to amend the uh, order of conditions and permit for work. Um, just as noted, the um, as with the the conditions noted in the staff report. I'm also noting that we need to uh, move the uh, permanent marker that is in the um, area uh, to be returned to naturalized uh, uh, area. Thomas, second. Uh, roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundin, nay. Spadia, aye. Thomas, aye. Okay. So uh, we're all set. So congratulations. Good luck with the house. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, next up is 153 Chestnut Street. Um, hopefully this goes very quickly. Um, this is um, Ann Rad. Uh, is, this, is this Scott again? It is not again. Oh, that's beautiful. Love, love how that works. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, the tennis club that is uh, located off of Chestnut Street. Uh, we have had this. Uh, we've gone through this a few times with them. They've relocated some of the lines um, per our requests. Um, and I believe we agreed on all, all the lines here. We were just waiting for fees to be paid. Andrea. You've confirmed.
one if the fees have been paid? Correct. Okay, Scott, do you want to add anything here? No, just real quickly. So you kind of mentioned it. Again, my name is Scott Rogers, JK Home Engineering for the applicant. Uh, our last hearing was in July. We did make revisions to the plan previously about the existing uh, the wetland resource areas. Uh, the project was sort of put on hold a little bit because of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, we did have a town fee that had not been paid. And as you mentioned, that has since been paid. So here we are tonight. Um, so I think that, um, Andrew, do you want to say something? No? Um, I'm just pulling. I noticed that in this, yes, okay. If um, in, in the package, that you got on Friday, the original conservation package, um, you had my comments of, not just the, co the comments of uh, today, but the comments from April 23rd. It was page eight of um, the 25-page the packet. And in that package, it identified the, um, the conditions uh, for the ANRAD, if you chose to approve it, we were um, recommending, we, I say, because Carol, uh, Claire uh, Hogelboom was the um, consultant for this, um, for the applicant in this case. The only wetland areas located on the project site would be confirmed by your decision that the, um, the BVWA series from flag number A27 to flag number 109 and WF26A through um, 26H would be considered a state resource area. The local resource areas are identified as the potential vernal pool western boundary only and an intermittent stream type one and then a second intermittent stream type three near the driveway. Um, with the flags identified. And the, the last condition would be that there's insufficient information for the commission to make a determination on the bordering land subject to flooding. This area is known to experience localized flooding. So any future filing, the engineer should identify the extent of known flooding using a topographic survey or FEMA flood study if one was prepared for the area. Noted. Uh, any comments, Scott? No, those are all fine. Okay. Um, any uh, any comments from the um, the commission? Um, any public comment for one fifty three Chestnut Street? Okay, so seeing none, uh, I am going to make a motion to issue an ORAD, uh, an Order Resource Area Determination Delineation, sorry, um, for 153 Chestnut Street um, with the conditions uh, noted by Andrea um, in her April 23rd, 20, 2020. Um, staff report item number 14, which he most dutifully read into the record. I'm a second. Um, roll call vote. Caulfield's aye. Lundin aye. Beatty aye. Thomas aye. Very good. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Uh, next up is 226 Massapog. Okay, uh, we've got some attendees uh, that we're going to bring up to promote to panelists. They have their hands raised. Um, they also have a third uh, person here, but she didn't raise her hand, so we'll leave it for now. Uh, Nicole, Nicole Hayes just raised her hand. Yeah, she is. I was waiting for her. I'm I'm promoting her now. Okay. Okay. So um, 
I don't know if you guys want to take control of the uh, presentation here. You just want to have me bring it up or you guys can. Sure. Uh, I, I can uh, take that on this meeting here. Great. Thanks. Introduce yourself for the record. Sure. My name is Mitch. I work with Goddard Consulting. I'm a wetland scientist and I'm representing the applicant Jay Zola tonight for his project at 226 Massapog Ave. Uh, we filed this notice of intent and had DEP file us a, um, a number. We've got SE152-1645, and they have not issued any comments on this project. Um, so I'm going to share the screen here so you guys can see what uh, the project looks like. Oh. It says um, another participant is sharing the screen right now. There you go. Okay. Just pulling it up here. Hold on, I have to check my privacy settings. It says, just give me a second here. So maybe while Mitch is looking for that plan, this is Scott Goddard. I could maybe start presenting a little bit about the project. Great. If you, I don't know if you're echoing for me. Mitch is in the other room, so I don't want to create an echo. Just let me know if you hear the feedback. So this is a existing single family house lot and there's no development so it's a vacant lot there's bordering vegetative wetlands located on the site there's also bordering land subject to flooding on the site and that's the extent of the wetland resource areas the site falls within the in acec as well the bbw was delineated by uh, me and my staff and re peer reviewed by um, your staff so I believe the resolution of the BBW is, is uh, agreed upon in the field. It's kind of a transitional slope down to a sweet pepperish red maple swamp on the site. There's bordering land subject to flooding as mapped by FEMA. It's a zone A as opposed to an AE. So that means no elevation set. The line that goes across the bottom of your screen there uh, that's in brown is what's mapped as a 100 year floodplain zone A. Now it's somewhat problematic in my mind because of doesn't follow the topography. So being it's an A, I think it has some built in problems. It probably more realistically, if there was an E associated with it or an elevation, it would, I would assume it would follow the BVW boundaries. Um, so we show it regardless based on the the GIS overlay. The 50 foot buffer zone is on site. That's highlighted here roughly in, in the blue slash yellow line. And then the 100 foot buffer zone is the most upgraded blue line that goes through the proposed house. As far as the other issue for wetland resource areas was whether or not there's a presence or absence of a stream inside the BVW. We did examine the interior of the BBW, both by the aerial photographs and the G USGS map. There's no discernible stream channel by aerial photos, by the USGS map. And in the field, uh, me and the staff could not identify a continuous stream channel. There was some discussion with your staff in the field about some areas within the BBW that would uh, puddle and have pockets of standing water in the springtime but we could not identify anything that would make a continuous stream path. So I don't think, in my professional opinion, the stream provisions of your bylaw would apply and therefore any specialized setbacks to interior stream channels, I don't think would be applicable to the site. Uh, so I see Mitch was able to get the screen shared. So I'll let him take over from there and discuss the proposed project. 
So the proposed project is a uh, single family home and a paved driveway with a uh, septic system and proposed retaining wall bordering the 50 foot no disturb buffer zone to the bordering vegetated wetlands. Um, work is proposed within the 100 foot uh, buffer to the wetlands, which includes the house, the retaining wall, and the driveway and septic system. Um, we are proposing work within the 100 foot buffer zone to the uh, floodplain. Also, within the 50 foot uh, floodplain, we are proposing grading. Um, to mitigate from erosion, we are proposing erosion controls around the limit of work with um, compost filled silt socks and stakes. And we did receive um, Andrea's letter to, you know, requesting some recommendations. Um, we can go over that if you'd like to go over that too. Um, so uh, in order to do this work, we did have to request some waivers. The work within the 50 foot flood plain, uh, 50 foot buffer to the flood plain, we had to request a waiver for that work which is grading. Uh, we had to request a waiver for the work within the 100 foot buffer zone of the BBW, um, both because their work within areas of critical environmental concern. Uh, so we also had to meet the, um, the standards for work within the ACECs. Uh, the final waiver request was for work within rare species habitat, um, and we had contacted Natural Heritage and got a letter from them saying that it was a no take um, on the rare species on site. So um, we're requesting that waiver, um, you know, be, be satisfied and uh, in order to us. Uh, as for the waiver for the um, work within the 50 foot buffer zone to the floodplain, we uh, are proposing grading, which uh, we don't believe will have a significant impact to that floodplain. Um, and also for the work within the 100 foot buffer zone, uh, we are proposing the house, the septic system, the driveway, the retaining wall. And with our erosion control barriers, we believe that um, impacts to the BBW will be negligible. Um, we did discuss alternatives to this project, um, this proposed layout. Uh, if we put the house on the other side of the wetlands, closer to the south, uh, it would have brought the, the house closer to the BBW within the 50 foot no disturb zone, which would have uh, created more impacts. Um, if we had put the house Further from Massapog Ave, deeper into the lot, we would have certainly impacted the wetlands. So that was, um, you know, not a, a feasible alternative as well. Um, so we decided to place the, the house, the driveway, septic system, and retaining wall as far from the BVW as possible and as far away from um, floodplain as we could, uh, given those circumstances. And uh, we are willing to discuss any further topics on this. So, I mean, I'll, I'll start here. Um, I, I think that um, I have some concerns that we're, we're missing a significant portion of information necessary to make some decisions here. Um, and I think that we, we can start with the ACEC um, mapped uh, habitat. Um, and I, I know that we've got a no-take letter from National Heritage, um, but that's just that's your threshold for even to be able to file a, a, a request for an NOI um, in the, under town bylaws. Um, we still have to talk about what the, the needs of this wildlife, um, what the, the, the habitat is for this rare species. Uh, we don't even know which rare species it is. I know that um, our agent actually requested um, from National Heritage um, um, exactly what uh, species it is so that we can understand what the habitat needs are for that uh, particular um, um, 
uh, wildlife. I, I think that's part of the concern that I have here is that we're missing a, a significant amount of information uh, related to the wildlife uh, habitat. Um, and so we will need to continue uh, searching for that information and have that, that presented to us. And once we get the information, we'll expect you to address the, the wildlife habitat um, impact of, uh, of that for the, 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 uh, uh, the site and the development that's being done. And I think it's going to be a pretty significant issue here. Um, you know, this is the Canoe River Aquifer um, Zone 2. You know, so, um, you know, we, we're dealing with a significant impact here, um, not even just in the ACEC um, from a habitat standpoint, but also our, our groundwater. This uh, Canoe River aqu Aquifer is the sole source groundwater um, source for all six wells in, in Easton. So this is our groundwater. Um, this is our drinking water. It, it comes from groundwater in this time. So um, but we have to be very careful what we deal with here. Um, which brings me to the, the second issue is that um, given that we're in the ACEC, um, I, I think we have to talk about the, the location of the, the septic system. Um, one thing that was potentially uh, suggested was flipping the, uh, the house um, so that the septic system is on the other side of the driveway um, and having the driveway uh, be where the septic system is um, to keep it out of the uh, um, as far away from the, the buffer zone or the BBW as possible. There, there is, to be honest, um, as part of the waiver process, um, there's a suggestion that we would, um, since this is new construction and not replacement of an existing um, system, that we might look to the Board of Health to um, suggest a low nitrogen system. Um, that would um, decrease the amount of uh, nitrogen going into the soils. Uh, we've done this in one other um, um, new construction application that we've had um, in the ACEC Canoe River Act for, and I, and I think that um, if I think the Board of Health, um, if we requested it um, as part of the waiver process, um, would likely um, consider it um, a, a good choice here. Um, in this particular case. Um, there is something also um, within the, the waiver request, you uh, talk about some potential flooding issues um, on the street and hoping that this um, development would improve that. Um, and, and I say you, you, it's, it's hoping because I didn't see any calculations that that actually was going to happen. Um, so I don't know what is actually happening with uh, stormwater management on this site. Um, um, that is one of the, the thresholds that you have to deal with um, as far as working in the flood zone um, and dealing with stormwater. Um, I think that there has to be some specific uh, calculations made here to know that we're handling the stormwater um, that's coming off of the pervious, the new per impervious um, surfaces that you're creating in this um, ACEC um, um, as well as the, the flood zone. Um, I'm just trying to go through my list here. Um, so I, I think that that is um, some of the highlights. I, I know Andrea still made some comments about the fact that, you know, given the, the, the height of the drought that we're in, um, being able to know whether or not there's an actual stream in there is a little bit challenging. Um, and so um, I don't know that that's necessarily settled, but I, I think if we can, um, it, I, don't, I don't know what we'll have to do with that. It's a you know, conversation maybe we have uh, further down the road. But, um, any, any other comments from the commission? Uh, you're, you're muted, Carol. Thank you, Rory, um, for uh, your preparation and sharing all that. Um, I'm not quite clear. Is this a previously disturbed site or not? No, this is a forested site. Um, if it was disturbed, it would have been disturbed, you know, 30 plus years ago. Sure. Okay. So um, to add to what Rory was mentioning, um, the 
the town regs at 503.22, waiver from performance standards. Um, a couple of things that haven't come up. One is the, the public benefit statement. So I didn't see that you had, I didn't read your entire letter. Have you included a public benefit statement? Um, yes, our, our public benefit was um, proposed grading within the, the rear of the house. Um, we'd be taking away some some land back there, grading it back closer to the house, which would provide more flood storage, um, preventing flooding over Massapauga Ave. Um, so, you know, like the chairman said, we haven't done the calculations, but it is um, it is a potential benefit to the public. Um, just as well, we um, have put in, you know, the erosion control barriers and such in the public interest not to um, damage the, the bordering vegetative wetlands or the the flood zone, which is um, on the other side of the silt fence. Right, thank you. Uh, so one other thing is um, your burden of proof. You have a, a heavy lift here. You have to show that the proposed activities will have no significant adverse effects upon any of the bylaw wetland values. So just off the top of my head, when you're building a home in a, uh, the outer 50 feet of a buffer zone, how is removing all that material, the habitat, the trees, how is that not affecting the wildlife and wildlife habitat values? I think Mitch, can I handle that one? Sure, yes. So. And maybe just turn your speaker down so I don't cause an echo. But Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, I think that's a great Carol uh, question that Carol raised. So, and the chairman uh, raised a number of other uh, excellent questions. I think as this is our first hearing, there's clearly going to be some room to come back with additional supplemental information on this, right? We need to sort of better flesh out the specific habitat requirements of the rare species address the burden of proof questions, which is going to tie into some of this new additional information we're going to get, the stormwater management, the discussions about alternatives with septic system locations. So clearly we're going to need to come back and present supplemental information. So I think what I'd like to do is handle the burden of proof part of that waiver request with that supplemental information. Right. Thank you. Go ahead, Carol. Oh, thank you. Um, being in map wildlife habitat, um, I wonder about anyone's thoughts about a conservation restriction here. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think that, that one of the things that I was actually just going to say that um, the, the public benefit that's being proposed here, I just want to say that for a, a new construction um, dwelling, in an ACEC, um, taking care of intermittent flooding on the the, the, the street is, is not adequate. I just wanna say that we would never allow that as an adequate public benefit for um, this kind of project. Um, it, it needs to be significantly greater than that. And, and I think that things like uh, Carol's mentioning as far as a conservation restriction to ensure we understand about uh, protecting the habitat of this, um, uh, whatever um, rare species we have out there, um, whether it's a no take or, or not, um, we still need to protect the habitat. So um, that's something that you're gonna wanna think about and I'm glad that Carol raised the issue. Um, and to be quite honest, um, if, if there was additional property beyond what was on this, this lot, you may wanna consider that as part of of a conservation restriction as well. So I don't know if, if the landowner owns additional property uh, 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 adjacent to this, it may expand that conservation restriction. Uh, but, um, you know, we have a pretty strong uh, responsibility here to um, take care of this in an ACEC. So um, I just, I want you to consider what your, what your ask is here and, and what, what you really need to get to as far as offsetting that. Um, and, and I think Carol's point is that, you know, we, we have a pretty high threshold on this. 
And um, to get over that, you're going to have to come back with some pretty compelling um, um, information that makes us um, understand that what we're doing here is in the best interest of um, of of the of the town as far as protecting the wetland resources. Understood. Um, any other questions? Follow-ups? Yes, John, go ahead. So I guess my question is, um, I guess with the proposed driveway, I'm looking at Mass Oliver right now, and it looks like there's a paper road for a, a rear parcel mm -hmm. that is going to be right next to this driveway. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. That's a good question, uh, John. I, I wasn't aware of that, actually. So I'll, that'll be one of the things I can look into. All right, thanks. Also, Drew, real quick, what's the lot size? Is that an acre and a half or a little larger? It's 92,000 square feet, so it's about a little over two acres. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they have 43,000 uh, upland on the, on the piece of property and about 46 that's in the uh, or 49. Okay, uh, any other questions from the commission? Um, do we have any uh, pop? Oh, I see people in the chat here. So, uh, okay. So somebody just wanted a better view of the of the uh, property, which I think that they did have. Um, and so, um, does anybody have any uh, public comment for uh, two twenty six Massapoke Park? You can raise your hand. We'll, we'll uh, bring you into the uh, um, up to the panelists so you can ask a question. So uh, I see somebody did raise their hand. So I will. She's been promoted. So uh, it's Linda Messini. I can't see the rest of the name, so. So you, you're off mute, so you can, uh, you have a question? Yes, uh, so my name's Alan Pavlov. I'm a 232 Mass Pog Ave. That was my wife that you uh, were just referencing. Uh, I'm gonna butter up the property. Um, so I had significant concerns. Um, several of them you actually did address tonight. I don't know if you prefer me to read my uh, my whole statement in, or if it's something you would, I could uh, get into the record. It's, uh, it's up to you. I'm not sure exactly how you want to do this as far as. So I, 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 to be honest, if you have comments, I don't know how lengthy your, your um, input is. Um, I do want to receive it. I, I don't want to you know, not have you um, be able to, to have your input on this since you're in a butter. Um, and so you've taken the time to come to this meeting. I think you were also at the last meeting, which we uh, didn't get a chance to. So I, I'm, I'm happy to take it whichever way you want. If you want to give us the highlights, and then put your comments in an email to Andrea that we can put into the into the public record, um, whichever one is is easiest for you. Um, okay, so uh, the first uh, issue I had was that um, uh, the, the burden of proof of uh, for the waivers request request by the applicant um, that they have not provided clear and convincing evidence that any application of new pavement or other impervious materials within a 100 foot area beyond the 100 foot buffer zone to a vernal pool bank, vegetated wetland or land underwater shall have no natural and consequential cumulative impacts on the said resource area. Moreover, the stormwater discharges within the uh, AC, EC shall be removed and set back from the area of objective protection under the bylaw and receive the highest and best practical method of treatment. I don't believe that the applicant has provided clear and convincing evidence that the proposed project will have no impacts on the resource areas. Uh, the applicant has not even provided the square footage of the buffer zone impacts. Given the commission's duty to use high standard scrutiny, the commission must ask for, for a precise description of the impact, including but not limited to the square footage of impacts, the square footage of impervious area, the building envelope of the proposed project, uh, what is to prevent the homeowner from putting in lawn sheds, swimming pools, et cetera, outside of the retaining wall. Uh, also the impact of the leaching field, so septic being within the 50 foot of the wetland, stormwater discharge, 
any pesticide or herbicide plant prohibitions. Um, I found that the uh, proposed plan is lacking in details. It's impossible to even have a cursory review, let alone a review that involves the highest standards of scrutiny. Um, the uh, applicant also stated that the project will have no adverse impacts on the BVW, considering there is 50 feet of undisturbed upland forest between the limit of work and the BVW with absolutely no evidence. The applicant should disclose how many mature trees will be removed from the site and how that will affect the hydrology of BVW. Tree removal increases wetness as evapotranspiration removes a lot of water from the soil. The species that live in the BVW and the water quality of the BVW. Um, for the rest, I think I will probably just submit the, the others, the other uh, four concerns that I have. Um, I do have a question as far as, I don't think this necessarily relates to the Eastern Conservation Commission, but I believe you're asking for another waiver on this property of the uh, 25 foot buffer zone to my property, where you have it as you want the structure built only 16 feet from the property. Can you answer that? Mr. Goddard. So, um, so let me just, I'll, I'll have the, the, maybe the questions from the, the chair, um, as opposed to directly from yeah. you. First of all, Mr. Pavlov, I, I appreciate the very thoughtful um, input. Um, I think it's uh, a, a was, uh, well constructed and uh, you hit a lot of topics that we've already touched tonight. And you, so I think you understand that we take um, what you're saying um, as part of what we believe is necessary in order to proceed with this project. Um, I, I would say that from our standpoint, we don't have that information yet. And so okay. um, and so we've asked for that tonight and, and I agree with you that um, uh, that we need a lot more information in order to be able to proceed with this project. Um, so um, I'm not quite sure, um, Mr. Goddard um, or Mitch, uh, I'm not sure if you want to answer that question. It really is outside of my purview to ask you what the setback is and whether you're asking for a waiver from the planning and zoning uh, or plan to uh, for the waiver on the setback. It's a, it's a zoning question, like you said, Mr. Chairman, and I'd, I'd have to consult with the engineer on that, honestly. I'm, I'm not even quite sure of the answer. Fair enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pablo. Okay, so um, any other uh, comments from the public? Okay, so seeing, uh, uh, seeing none, um, I think we have to continue this. Um, I, I don't, so I, I don't know that we'll actually have enough information by our next meeting. So do you want to push it off to the meeting after that? I think that makes sense. Um, so I don't have my, my calendar in front of us. The meeting Whatever. after that is October 5th. So that's only three weeks. So it's either October 5th or the one after that is October 22nd? Most likely. So I, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. Tell me which one you want, want to go with. Yeah, I think we'll go to the latter one. So October 22nd. Yes, sir. Uh, motion to continue uh, hearing for 226 Massapog to October 22nd. I'm a second. Roll call vote. Call fells aye. aye. Chairman. Sorry. Uh, yes. Monday, October 19th. I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, correct. Uh, so let me amend the, the motion. Uh, man, my, my, my brain is not working here. <laughs> I couldn't get the... <laughs> Uh, make a motion to uh, continue the hearing to Monday, October 19th. Thomas, second. Roll call vote. Call fells aye. Uh, is that, uh, I have a question. Is that uh, Columbus Day weekend or the weekend after? Weekend after. Weekend after. Okay. Lundin, aye. Speedy, aye. Thomas, aye. Thank you, guys. Uh, so we look forward to getting a lot more information from you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so um, we are now on to some COCs for uh, 6 Greenfield Street. 6 Greenfield, 
was um, a CSOC COC you saw recently, and um, they didn't have their permanent markers in place. So they now, I got documentation that they have them. I think you even have a pretty picture that I put on Permadise that um, shows the documentation. I hope I put them on Permadise because it's not part of the staff report. Um, you did. Okay, so they're in place. I uh, There were no perpetual conditions, so uh, except for no dumping in the wetlands, number 46. Any comments? I have, this is Carol. I have a question. Am I muted? Let's see. No. 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 Um, looking at the pictures of the markers, um, the, are they made of PVC pipe? Yeah. If so, how are they permanent? I know. Um, we don't. We don't identify the type, and um, a neighboring town uses PVC pipes. Um, so. Actually, if you'd like to make permanent markers a perpetual condition, it is not listed as such um, in the order, but the word permanent may give you the ability to make that point. I think you could, I mean, if, if the board so chooses, you could, you could make that a permanent condition. They'll have to be replaced, Carol, you're right. Yeah. But wouldn't the wood posts need to be replaced too? Yeah. Unless, they're, unless they're treated, but they're going to rot over time. Yeah, they do. Even, it, even, yeah, treated, even, years. Yeah. even, even treated, it's going to rot. Yeah. yeah. I kicked them out of the way um, on sites. They've you've, come right out. You, you've kicked the PVC? No, PVC breaks. Brittle. Yeah. Um, but no, the, the permanent markers um, don't last forever either, but um, I don't mean to raise the policy question, but I have been thinking that um, the fact that it says permanent, you probably, you know, people probably intend it to be a permanent, a perpetual condition, even though it's not listed as such. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, so I, I will ask the question, any, any public comment on six Greenfield? Seeing none. Um, make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for uh, six Greenfield um, noting uh, perpetual condition number 46, no dumping in the wetlands, and an additional perpetual condition that the markers must be maintained in for a permanent installation. I'm a second. Roll call vote. Caulfell's aye. One D night. BDI. Thomas aye. Um, 10 Don Gary Road. 10 Don Gary. I also had a picture of this. I uh, didn't pull up. There are nine little, uh, actually reasonably robust high bush blueberries that were planted along the um, lawn area adjacent, right, right next to a permanent marker on the southern side of the property. Um, and the permanent markers are clearly identified. They weren't in before. So um, I think that the people will absolutely see the uh, bushes. I think they'll probably last. Um, I recommend you consider this a approval. Just because it was septic upgrade, um, you didn't have mitigation. You didn't say monitoring was required for the bushes. Any questions? Any public comment for 10 Don Gary Road? Seeing none, um, make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 10 Don Gary Road, uh, noting the perpetual condition, no dumping in the wetland. Speedy second. Roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundy night. Speedy aye. Thomas aye. Thank you. Um, Okay, so now we have two different COCs for 72 North Main. Um, these are a bit of a cleanup, aren't they, at this point, Andrea? Absolutely. So the first order of conditions, if we if we call it um, Easton 1323, it was issued, well, it's the last order of conditions. It was issued in 2015 
for a septic upgrade. In 2014, there was an Easton condition 1299 to construct three building um, additions to this cute little house. And with not, it's not little, this cute house. Um, one of the additions was constructed, but it was constructed after the as built plan was drawn up for the septic system. So we don't have an as built plan for it, but it's there. And the other two aren't. So for condition for Easton order 1323 and its uh, respective state order. Um, note that all the, that that the decision has expired prior to the completion of two of the three building additions. It's, yep. You have one and if you want any more you have to come back for another order. Understood. Any, any, um, so the lawn is stabilized and everything at this point. And the septic system. system is fully stabilized and uh, the permanent markers weren't in until just recently, and they are very much in now. Um, no dumping in wetlands is a perpetual condition for the septic, um, permit number 1299, and um, there hasn't been any that I noted. There's okay. wetlands all around this, and there's two potential vernal pools adjacent to the property. Okay, so, um since they seem to be in substantial compliance at this point, uh, noting that, that the uh, permits expired on, on one of them. So um, why don't we take them one at a time just so that for the record, it's, it's done properly here. So um, uh, any public comment on 72 North Main? Seeing none. Um, any comments from the, the commission? One so, at a time sounds uh, great. Uh, so uh, Easton uh, 1299, uh, uh, make a motion to issue to certificate of compliance for Easton 1299, noting the special condition 42, no dumping in the wetlands is a perpetual condition. I'm a second. Roll call vote. Call fells. Aye. Lundy night. Beatty, aye. Thomas, aye. Uh, make a motion to issue certificate of compliance for Easton 1323, uh, noting that the um, only one of the, the building additions has been performed, two of the three have not, and the permit has expired and no longer valid. Speedy a second. Roll call vote. Call fells aye. One deny. Speedy aye. Thomas aye. Very good. Um, meeting minutes uh, is next up. I have one minor change on page eight. Um, it says that we accept in the second board business, it says we accepted uh, the minutes for August 10th. And in the motion, it says I made a motion to accept the August 3rd minutes. It, it should be changed to August 10th minutes because it, the first box is August 3rd. Any other changes? Nice catch. <laughs> my day job keeps me on my toes. Um, <laughs> So I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes for August 24th with the change noted uh, on page eight. Lundin second. Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Lundin aye. Spady aye. Thomas aye. Um, environmental planner updates. Okay. Um, the first step is that I'd like to request um, a uh, funds from the conservation trust fund in order to pay for a dam inspection of shovel shop dam in the center of town all seven publicly owned dams are on conservation commission property and um, you are required to do inspections on a regular basis sometimes as often as five years when it's significant um, hazard dam, but shovel shop is not. And so it is, uh, only needs to be done every 10 years. If you wouldn't mind allowing the 
town to meet the obligations of the state office of dam safety. Can uh, I, can you, would you please authorize $3,000 for a professional engineer to inspect and provide a report on Shovel Shop Dam? Do we already have a, uh, an, an engineering firm that we use for this? Yeah, I've got a quote from them. And I checked with um, DPW to see if they wanted additional quotes and it's a, it's a, it's a reasonable price for the work. Any, any questions from the commission? No, 3,000 is a good price. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So the reason it's a good price is because they did the um, inspection 10 years ago and the repairs. Oh, that even makes more sense. Yeah. So uh, make a motion to authorize uh, $3,000 for the dam inspection fee. Just give you a second. Uh, roll call vote. Call Phil's aye. Well, do not. Speedy aye. Thomas aye. Second, we uh, Natural Heritage sent us notice that there are nine new certified vernal pools in the town of Easton. Wow. Um, it, they're sort of their their vernal pools number eight one four one through eight one four nine. If you're interested, I can send you the Latin logs and you can figure out which ones they are. Because they send don't my way, please. Front of you. Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely want to see those too. Yeah. Oh, everybody wants to see them. Okay. So when you figure out where they're located, you let me know. Okay. I can tell you that two of them are at nine Bradford. Um, so when you requested that um, that that new house at nine Bradford certify the um, vernal pools, they were accepted. Excellent. So good call. Um, but you knew that because of the LEC report at the time. The MVP action grant update, Sam Wright wetland restoration plan has been received and the notice of intent was filed today by me um, for you, you are the applicant um, to be heard at the September 28th meeting. I am literally still uh, di uh, digesting the information that we got from our professional wetland um, scientist, but it's up there. It's on the it's on the um, it's on the application uh, module. We know that the amount of concrete to be removed is around 850 cubic yards, and we could restore wetlands up to 73,000 square feet to, to get to the wetland area that was there before. We're going to um, get a good wetland, we're gonna get some good flood storage on off of the Mulberry Brook. And um, in addition to the wetland restoration at the right at the, the wetland area. And we're gonna be going to the east um, to create that wetland and to recreate the historic pool. We actually, it's gonna be a wet meadow. Um, there's gonna be a lot of invasive species that need to be removed, which sounds like a wonderful thing, except the Conservation Commission and whatever friends you come up with are the ones that are gonna be on the hook to monitor it. So Mike, I hope you stick around. <laughs> Lori, Me too. Around. Good. Um, Brad Holmes is offered, even though it's outside the scope of work, to attend the notice of intent hearing. So you get to ask all sorts of good questions of him. He's very excited about the project. It um, there's a stream that comes into Mulberry Brook from the east uh, down that that sloping um, field on the east of the property, and um, there, he's going to put two pools into that stream. It's, it's dry right now, but when it's flowing, it'll give an opportunity for the water to um, settle and slow um, and create some more aquatic habitat in, in the moments when there's water. Um, we have had a lot of, of assistance from the Nature Conservancy um, and from Save the Harbor, Save the Bay over in Rhode Island, because we're part of Narragansett Bay, the larger Narragansett Bay watershed. And they will also attend the meeting next week, as will the MVP coordinator. She gets to say wonderful things about you guys doing a climate adaption, climate change adaption plan in one year and implementation in the second year. 
and you ought to be nice to her because she gave us money to do this. Um, so I tried to kick out a lot of stuff from that meeting um, so that it would be, you could have plenty of time to get public input on this because it's Wheaton Farm. People might actually have comments. Um, in addition to the invasive species, let me also say wildlife enhancement, big benefit to this project, and that'll come up as well. Um, so the second pro so that will be a big project for next week. Um, I don't think you have any septic repairs that have to be done next week. Um, another project that you're going to be excited about, but not as excited about, is 300 Foundry. Um, that's the Affordable Housing Trust duplex, the eight-unit um, residential dwelling for um, persons living with traumatic brain injuries. That has a single spot where you can do the driveway and the house, the duplex, but it's ACEC wildlife habitat, really good wildlife waiver analysis and a little bit of wetland filling that's being restored. Um, you're, you got some good expert attention on that wildlife waiver too. So you should be able to, um, you should be able to see it as the type of wildlife waiver you wish all your applicants provided. Um, that The only other thing um, I wanted to mention is, yes, it's mosquito threat for Tripoli. Um, Easton is still at a low risk, but the high risk area around Carver and Middleborough now has a cluster of 13 abutting towns with elevated risk, including West Bridgewater, Taunton, and Raynham. Now, why do I always tell you about the equine encephalitis risk. Because when you go out, you should really be, when you go out to do your wetland inspections, you really should be using mosquito repellent. Um, you do not want, you, if, you, if you can't wear long pants and long shirts, um, do put on mosquito repellent. Um, they are doing aerial spraying in Easton because of the Tripoli virus. It's likely to be a problem for a couple of years because it tends to go in cycles. Okay. You know, I, I, actually, um, I actually have in my car, you know, I, I've lost a significant amount of weight over the last few years. I actually have old clothes that I can pull on over whatever I'm wearing. And so that there's always a pair of long pants in my car and a long sleeve shirt because, you know, I didn't spray and I still go out and put stuff on. So. Not sure that I'm still at risk for sure. So, yeah, I just have to keep telling you because you know I don't want it on my, I don't want it on my. No, but but by the way, also it's it's hunting season again, so it's uh, you, you should all be wearing some bright color when well, you're not down this just <laughs> Okay, well, it's we're getting there. only only bear. We, not, we don't have those here just yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, soon. My yeah, lady. we got our first week of October. Okay. First week of October for which animal? I, I it'll be it'll be deer down in this part. Deer, okay. Um, I did. We did get a really nice hunting report. Um, I mean, a, a nice deer survey. I don't know if you got it as well, John. Um, and if you're interested, I think I tried to get it posted to the website. I don't know if it did, but I can send it to you. It's a Please. study done um, of the deer in Easton and the general east, the general eastern Massachusetts, and the density is enormous. And yeah, it's, it's, it's I, out there. I, my trail cameras grabbing an deer like it's their job. It's just so many. So yeah, please send that along. I'd love to look at. Well, it. I, I have a few that, that feast on the Austin, the front yard. So. Oh, that's their that's their salad bar. <laughs> and believe me, you're that's making, what we call it. My, you're going to make my winter meals very very plump and happy for me. So thank you. <laughs> so I'll send you the hunting report and the list of certified vernal pools um, tomorrow or the next day. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Great job well, on the on the Wheaton farm. Oh well, wait till you read it. Um, it's wait till we get through the presentation. We're we're not there yet. We, um, but yes, I'm, and great job, you guys, uh, getting trained to be monitors. Are you training <laughs> us? What you asked for? Um, is there oh, anything else, Andrew? Just point out on the MVP, the on the uh, the Sam Wright restoration. I mentioned to Rory, um, we put in the plan for what we really want. Like, wouldn't it be great 
if we could get this. Um, and we haven't gone out for quotes. And I don't know if the grant is going to be able to fund what I'm calling the Cadillac. But we're going to start looking for quotes. And when you look at the project, you could permit the whole thing. But you need to give us a priority of what really has to be done. And, you know, the low cost items are good ones to do. Um, so I just want you to be thinking about that. I don't want you to get too excited about the whole project because it's a great project if we could ever get all the money to do it. I'm going to give you an idea. I hope to have some idea of quotes um, and whether or not we can afford it. But I have federal partners and maybe they'll help us too. Great. It's an awesome, awesome job, Andrea. I really appreciate all the hard work you put into that whole MVP grant process and now the NOI and getting all the partners lined up. I mean, this is really just a significant uh, project. And I, and I know it really means a lot to you and uh, I appreciate all the hard work that you've, you've put into it so far. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward. I, I love that piece of property. I mean, I, I think it's one of those, when you tell people about Wright Farm, they know about Wheaton Farm, but Wright Farm is just as, uh, as interesting. So um, I, I do appreciate that. Well, I thank you, but it's too early for accolades. I, you know, I could still follow my face. I know, but <laughs> um, anything else? No, thank you. So I, I have one very brief item, and I know it's very late, and, and I really don't necessarily want to address it now, but um, I do want to consider um, making Stefan Cotino an associate member uh, of the Conservation Commission. Um, I, I never really, when I first joined the, the um, the commission, I didn't understand uh, why Jonathan Chase and uh, Christopher Patrick were associate members, and now I understand why they are, um, and so that they can act as our representatives when they're out doing trail work, and uh, they work a lot with the town and, and whatnot. So um, and we don't have to make this decision now for Stefan, but I know Stefan does want to remain uh, involved, um, and you know Mike's out there doing that work. But he's a member of the commission, so he can act on our uh, as a representative on our behalf. So it really makes it a lot easier for these, you know, Eagle Scouts and whatnot that are out in the field um, to get advice from the commission and, and get answers from us right away. So, um, so I do want to consider that. I'll probably put it on the agenda for next meeting just so that we can have a formal vote of it. Um, and I, you know, anybody who wants to continue to volunteer their time for the town. Um, and all the work that Stefan's done and the commitment he's had um, is, I'm all for it. So I just wanted to bring that issue to it. Okay, um, that's it for me. I think we have one more motion that, that I need to get from somebody. Motion to adjourn. Second, Lundin. So Thomas, a motion, Lundin, second. Uh, roll call vote, Caulfield's aye. Lundin, aye. Lady aye. Thomas, aye. Thank you all, guys. It's uh, really uh, a great meeting. We got some good work done tonight, so I appreciate it. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Thank you.